everyone. How are you doing? And I'm here and we're going to talk about resin today. Um, oh, let me see. Present it. Okay. Make sure you see me. Um, I see Miss Jean and Toby and Joanne and Carla. How are you doing? Uh, we we're trying to get to Lisa on the panel. Um, she's in here, but we can't hear her. <laughs> so I'm all alone for right now. <laughs> so that's what I was trying to do. And why is it? Oh, is it still sh showing just, is it still showing just to Lise? Okay. There we go. And yeah, there's a still a couple of problems. Okay, there we go. Yeah, a couple of problems in the beginning. I think we're on track now. Can everybody hear me? Hey, Laura, how are you doing? Uh oh, she's here to talk about resin. Okay, so I've had a number of folks um, that have asked me and have expressed issues with using resin. So I have, and we sell this in the store, and it's the Aluma Res RC3. And it's a two-part resin casting system. And it comes in black, which is my favorite. Oh, boy, boy. It's my favorite. And also tan and also white. We sell all three in the store. Um, I freaking fell in love with the Aluma Res and I actually bought it by mistake. So we're going to go over the things that you need, um, different things that you can do with resin. This is going to sound kind of bad, but when to pull it out and, <laughs> and uh, some tips and tricks. So with that said, let me see. We got, okay, I said I already said hi to pretty much everybody. All right, so with that said, I am going to show you the different supplies that we're going to need. Okay, some people use a scale. Um, I have found that um, a pretty cheap scale, I think it was like five or six bucks at the store, and they work pretty good if you don't want to keep buying these little measuring cups. And I have the measuring cups. You'll also need cups. Now, you don't have to have special cups. You just gotta know when to pour it out. <laughs> but these are the cups, and usually if you buy um, resin from the shop, I will send you two cups. Um, but these are the cups, and um, one of the things that I do recommend is the one with the pour spout because, and I will show you why later, um, it'll give you a little bit more accuracy. Um, I am going to use also, these are my little dollar store plastic cups. You can use these if you don't, you know, if you don't buy resin from the shop and you buy it from Michael's, which they do have, they have the eight ounce, um, well, it's 16 ounces, eight ounces on part A, eight ounces on part B. Um, then, um, and you use your coupon at Michael's, and I think they sell them at Joann's and Hobby Lobby. Um, I did use that at first, but, and I, I'm not trying to upsell or anything like that, but when I fin finally found black resin, and literally the only place I can find black resin um, with the Luma Light, um, I haven't gone back. <laughs> um, these are also dollar store cups, and these are the, you know, the cheap plastic ones that break after uh, uh, one washing or whatever. Also, I prefer gloves because if you spill it or you overpour or whatever, it's going to get sticky. And you need some paper towels. You also need. And these are in my thing. I also go to the dollar store and um, I get some stir sticks. And 
I usually will break it in half, use the other half, or if I have gloves, I can use the other half. Hey, Tiffany, how are you doing? Um, uh, oh, she's finishing up the camera. Oh, cool. Um, and then, of course, you'll need some molds. Um, I pulled out some of the um, Prima molds. I've gone a little crazy and I ordered some Prima molds, so I'll use a couple of these tonight. Um, also, if you are the over the seas, uh, <laughs> if you are the over the water shopper, then of course you will recognize some of these. So I've gotten some of the um, the A molds, and also if you have red rubber stamps or you have the rubber stamps. We're going to do a little tips and tricks with this. This happens to be the Adonis Mixed Media Stamp from Stamparia. I love this, so I can't wait to see how this turns out. Also, if you have mica powder, you can also use mica powder. And I did a tutorial. Hey, Shirley, how you doing? Um, I did a tutorial on using mica powder and doing like an ombre kind of effect um, with... Um, the butterfly mold and we're going to use the butterfly mold as well today um so let's get started with all these goodies i am going to use the white resin first oh but i do have to kind of warn you oh boy and i'm not responsible for anybody's addiction i'm just saying not responsible because I um <laughs> I did this and I was like, oh, oh, I'll just play around with molds, da 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 da. Then all of a sudden I'm over across the water buying molds galore. I am buying resin galore, and yep, that happened. So not responsible, but <laughs> let's get started. Now I'm gonna start with the white resin as you can see mine are well loved what i usually do now because i do a lot of kits and i put a lot of resin in there um i usually um buy the gallon and i've um people that do a lot of kits with resin or whatever i do recommend buying the gallon we do have that in there and the gallon does come in white tan and black as well and if you do buy the gallon, we also will give you the cups and two empty bottles to use. I love these bottles because they're easy to use. So I'm going to do it the easy way first. And I think I am going to use oh, everybody's favorite wings and things. <laughs> and I'm going to bring this down so you can see. So as one cures, we'll go ahead and move on to the next and show you. And I'll be looking at chat to see if I'm by myself today. So to see if anybody ha has questions. Uh, <laughs> oh, <laughs> Talisa's going to round up the missing students. Yes, the missing students in our mixed media class because you never know if resin's going to end up in your kit. <laughs> oh, warning. If you have a dog and you have molds, do not leave them anywhere. I don't know what it is about molds, but they will suck up dog hair and cat hair like nobody's business. Uh, every time I do, I'm wiping off molds. All right. <laughs> I know. I love this one. So one of the things that you'll learn is that how much resin to use with molds. Um, I usually, <laughs> I usually had, uh, so much resin left. I was wasting resin and just letting it harden in the cup or whatever. But my trick to that is if you don't plan on using, you get a new mold. Hey, Christine, if you don't plan on, <laughs> Hey, that's a good thing. Laurel, please do. <laughs> um, <clears throat> if you don't plan on using the mold right away, what I recommend is just filling up these cups that you get because you're going to get a stir stick and two cups in a box of resin that you get either the eight the 16 ounce or in a 32 ounce and when i say 32 ounce i mean two 16 ounces um they're going to give you this in the store 
So you're going to start with this. If you have molds or whatever, I would just take some water, fill it up, and then find out how much resin. If you're not going to be doing a whole bunch of molding, because what usually happens, I'll have mold left over, then I'll scramble to go grab another mold. So, so what it is, and this is part A, and these are my empty bottles, but usually part A will come in, um, will be the clear. So you'll see this is the clear at the bottom. Usually part B on the white will be a yellowish color. But if you leave it in the cup long enough, it actually turns white. So I try to keep mine on the opposite side of each other because y'all know I'm disorganized. And I also keep the cups on the opposite side because I always mess up. So the first way to do it is on these cups, you'll find that they have half a teaspoon, one teaspoon and a tablespoon, two tablespoons. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put one tablespoon in here and I'm going to put, and you can leave the top on, it doesn't matter. And the reason I like these is if you look, they have a pour spout. On the eight ounce you find at the store, you don't have one and I always mess up. Now, you can eyeball these very easy no problem and i'm going to use my dollar store cup to show you now with the dollar store cups um oh let me start let me digress a little bit when you're using resin and um you're mixing it it's fine when they're both apart it's not going to do anything to your cups or anything else when you mix them together the hardener will start reacting with part a and that will start to harden in whatever you put it in. If you, and it, it gets hot, it's a hot mama. So the more resin you use, the hotter your mold's gonna be. This is not gonna be too hot, and this little bit is not gonna be too hot. But let's say you do a bigger mold like this, it's gonna be hot. So don't go touching it, don't go feeling it up, it's gonna get hot. You gotta let it cool down. Be patient, which I'm not. That's how I know it's hot. <laughs> so, okay, so we got to talk. About. Okay, so I always start with part A, which is the clear. And it's not gonna be exact, but if you have the same amount and it's in different cups, it pretty much will be exact because you'll have the same sort of residue in there. So when you're mixing resin, they tell you mix it until it's clear and i'm doing a little amount and then we'll do a big amount so you see it's clear right it's ready to roll you have a about a minute timeline depending on how much resin you use to get the resin mixed and poured or it's going to start hardening it's right now it's it's pretty it's pretty good and you see no problem it'll pour Okay, another thing, and I did this on purpose. I did not pour enough in there. That's okay. If you need to mix a little bit more, resin will harden on top of resin, no problem. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put in another teaspoon, and and I'm going to pour it in here because that's not hard yet. And then I'm putting in another teaspoon. And I'm gonna work really fast to get this mixed. And if you're a messy mixer like me, it's gonna go all over you. And I didn't put on gloves. Go figure. I always forget my gloves. And that's it. So, I'll move that around a little bit. And so once you put it in there, they have different resin, and this happens to be the quick set resin, which is the R3, RC3. And you'll find that it's going to start whitening in a minute. And um, then you have what they call a plat 15, I think, well, 15 minute resin. And that is, and I have that too, slow set, sorry. If you're one of those people, that do a lot of pouring or you you know want to be as careful as possible 
I look and and I pulled them out and didn't put them on. I know, right? I always do that. Forget my gloves. So they have a slow set. And we don't have this in the store because I wasn't sure, you know, if anybody, you know, wanted it or whatever. But this one is slow set and it you have seven minutes to work with it. Whereas with the quick set, you have about a minute, minute and a half, maybe three minutes total tops to work with it. I've had <laughs> and I'm going to show you. <laughs> Because it's the funniest thing. It, it cracks me up every time. But you have about three minutes to work with it and get it poured. If you're working with um, a lot of uh, molds, then uh, you're good to go. But if you're working with like one or, I mean, like one mold, you're good to go. If you're working with a lot of molds and you're trying to pour with a quick set, oh, no. I would use the 15 minutes. So I'm going to pull that aside. Now, I am going to switch, and it should see it start hardening. I do, uh, now, there is a couple of things I do want to, how, how have I lost it? Oh, the tops are on it. I'm such an idiot. I thought I lost the tops. Okay. Now, this, what's going to happen is this one is going to harden. You can use it immediately afterwards, but if not, then I would just put the cup aside. You don't need that anymore and pull out another cup. You can still save these because these you have not mixed together. So this belongs to this and this belongs to that. Um, if you want to wipe it out, you probably would need to wipe it out immediately. So what I would do, and I'm getting ready to use a different kind in here, is just go ahead, wipe it out. This is your hardener. And wipe it out if you're going to be using a different color if you don't wipe it out of me you can just let it let it harden in the cup especially these cups and you can pull it right out if you, if you notice these cups are very dirty these are the cups I was using before but I can pull I think yeah I think I can I can pull the resin right on out of it and reuse the cup again and when I it's going to, I need my nails for this. When I say pull it out, it's going to pull all of it out. And then you have a clean cup again. And there's some on the outside. I'll get that. And you can just reuse your cup again. So that's why I like these cups. And I'll and usually send them out. And then I'll go and clean them with some Lysol and Clorox and stuff later. <laughs> Martha. All right. So that's one. So you see, this is starting to whiten. That's when it's starting to cure. It has about a five to seven minute cure time. Whereas if you use the um, quick, uh, the slow set resin, it's a 30 to 60 minute demold time. So you have to have time to do this. I think I got this in black too. No, I got this in tan. So it's seven minutes, but it's 30 to 60 minutes to demold it. So this one, you have to have a little bit of patience. But if I'm doing a lot of molds, I like to use this because I have a little bit of time to work with it. If not, I usually use um, the uh, RC3. And this one has, um, it's liquid to solid and it says seven minutes. Usually it's about five minutes, but it's pretty fast. Um so let me do let my say what can I um I need to grab another mold so this is another prima yeah I went a little crazy and bought a lot of molds recently I'm having a, a resining crisis no that's probably not a word but that's what I'm using resining I'm not a master resiner, <laughs> but I'm trying. So I am going to put the white aside and I'm going to use the tan. And I'm just kind of giving you a feel for each of them. <clears throat> and then I'll show you something right before it gets really, really hard. <laughs> All right. So if in fact 
you have a lot of resin to do a lot i mean a bigger mold and it's not just the smaller molds you can use two cups now what i usually do when i do two cups you can either pour equal amounts and measure it in one cup so i'm going to put this on and you got to be really steady hand for this and then I zero fill it and then I will pour what I think I'm going to need. So can you hear me now? That's 1.1. And this is for the OCD D people. And then you take that cup off and then you can pour this cup. And if you're really good, you can get it both at 1.1. Can you hear me now? Okay. So now you know you have equal amounts according to this scale. If you want to, you can pour 1.1 in this cup, Nobody can measure me it, me. and then 2.2 as you pour that in. But you're really not necessary. Another thing about resin, and this is a tip, if you have two cups and then you pour this one into this cup, you're going to have residue. So your ratio is going to be a little messed up and it may not harden as fast or it may have a little bit of the softness or whatever. So, so I would use the third cup to actually pour this in. And I just turn it around and use the other side so I don't waste their sticks. No cheat. So I'm going to put this over there with there. And stir it up. So as you notice, it ain't going to go clear. So you kind of kind of figure that if it goes less muddy or less gray, you're ready to go. So what I usually do is just time it for about 15 seconds and stir. And then I start a pouring. Now I will squeeze this cup a little bit because I still need that little pour action. And I let usually with the molds and especially with the Prima molds, they're very intricate. So where you see the big spout or whatever, that's where I will pour. And when I see it go into the last of it, so this is what I mean about these cups when you don't have the spout action, is it'll go down the side and drip. That's okay. Just take your finger and move it out. It's okay. It doesn't, it's not hot yet. Okay, now with the dollar store cups, see, I always mix too much. <laughs> and we'll pour some in here. So I always have extra mold on hand. Now with the dollar store cups, they're fine. It hasn't dripped, it'll drip down the side, but you don't want to keep a lot of resin don't let your resin sit because when it starts to um, react it gets hot and if it gets hot it's gonna um, melt these dollar store cups so you want to make sure that you pour as much as possible hey Sonia can you talk <laughs> Nikki can you hear me Sonia's still on here but I can't hear her <laughs> yes I killed the truck oh quick I did but as you can see, it drips. That's okay. That's why I, I got this that. piece of paper because I know I'm a mess. For real. Yeah, and the good thing about the dollar store cups is you don't have to clean them. You can just throw them out. <laughs> so this one's uh, setting up. Now the same thing that's going to happen um, with the white is going to happen with the tan. And you can see that that's starting to, to cure. I will tell you, if you have um, 
if your um, resin starts to go bad, it's going to take longer to cure. And you'll also notice in the darker ones and in the uh, side B, you're going to get little crystals at the bottom. That's when you know you got bad resin. You can still use it, but it's just going to take a little bit longer to um, cure. So wait a minute. So everybody else? You, Nikki, uh, can oh. you hear me? Yes, but I can't hear her. Why can't I hear you, Sonia? <laughs> can y'all hear her? Y'all can hear me. Everybody else can hear me. <laughs> but Nikki that can't. That is the weirdest stuff. I started huh. to get ink. I didn't know if it would end it in the truck, but it was probably the end of the car. I don't know. Okay. So everybody can hear it at least but me. That is weird. Now that's a new one for Hangouts. It is a new one for Hangouts. Okay. Oh boy. Could you ladies hear my husband? Well, Sonia? <laughs> yeah, I don't know. It's It's a new one for Hangouts. Oh, well, well, Sonia, when we take a, a mid break, then she has something to show you. That's it's I don't know. It's one of those things. So this one's setting up. So as you can see, it's setting up and you're going to let it cure. Don't touch it, because if you do, it's soft. It's not hard. Well, this one's so hard. They could hear me. <laughs> I can't hear me. Oh, well, either. see, it sets up fast. It's still hot. That, that's hot. This one's really hot. This one's semi-hot. Okay, so when you see that it's cool to the touch, it's kind of ready to come out. I'm not worried about this one because that one's setting up, but I'm not going to mess with it. And you can see it come out. Now, you can let it sit in there for a while, but if you feel it and it's not hot, then it's still pliable. So if you plan on using it to put around anything, you hello, can mold hello, it hello. to what you want it. I, I can't hear you at all. And it's a little sticky too, so it's going to stay. But if you want it straight, you can just lay it flat. So that is a good thing. And you can bend it. As long as it's still pliable. So you just have to make sure that as soon as it, um, you don't feel the um, heat on it, pull it out. And it's still going to be pliable so you can work with it. You can cut it if you over pour. You can do whatever you want with it. So I'm going to leave this and I will show you. I need a little, little thing and I will show you. So. Leave it like that, and it's all the way bent, and just set it down and let it harden. <laughs> I know, <Okay>. sorry. <laughs> Sonia, just text me when you're ready to talk. Where's my phone? <laughs> That's, this is, happens to be the weirdest freaking hangout. <laughs> my husband right, same got with this. Truck this one's ready to go. And truck. what I usually do is I'll pop it. And if it pops out the side like that, then I, can, I know I can pull it out. It's not going to tear or anything. I know I can pull it out. And then this is flexible. And it's ready to roll. So about another probably two to three minutes, it's going to fully harden. And then you're not going to be able to bend it. However, if it's hard, and I'm going to pull out one that has already hardened. Um, let's do this one. <laughs> you need the wing one, right? <laughs> Carla, you might be in luck with the next kit. Just saying. Not saying, but just saying. <laughs> so, this is one that's already hardened. It's not bendable.
because if I bend it too hard, it might break. Well, it's not going to break because it's too rough and I ain't that strong. So I'm going to heat this up and I will show you. Usually what I'll do is I will heat it for about 30 seconds on one side and flip it over and I'll do the other side. If you if it's a small piece of resin, just make sure you hold it with something so you don't burn your hand like I've done before. And it's going to make the resin pliable again. And then if you hold it in that position, it will harden once again. This time probably a little bit faster and you can use it for what, what you want. And you got to be careful because once it's soft again, it will break. That wasn't meant to happen, but hey, teaching moment. <laughs> Am I broke? Oh, oh, wow. <laughs> so, but you can, you can heat it back up and you can bend it and then use it for what you want. Oops. So, here we go. So, I'm pulling this out and again, I'm just going to pull off the side. And if I left it in there, it would harden all the way and I wouldn't be able to bend it, but I didn't. So I'm going to put these off to the side. That's my cup for that side. Yep. Yeah. And this is still actually still um, pliable. And then here's the other ones. And sometimes when you have um, uh, a thin thing of resin or a thin mold, it looks a little translucent. That's okay. Just pull it. It actually pops back into place. And then here's your other resin piece. This is the lock. I love, I do, this is one of my favorite molds. So I'm going to put that aside. The stick I've already used that has too much stuff on it. So I'm feeling this. This is still a little warm. And that's still a little warm. But what I'll always do is I'll take and I'll do the corner. And if the corner comes off like that and all the corners come off, then I know I can pull it out. However, this side is not yet done because it's still kind of gummy. So I'm going to let that sit for a few more minutes. The pieces, the droplets, they come right off. He could, oh, he could hear us. Okay. I have no clue to least. <laughs> what all right so the other thing that you may want to think of too if you over pour like i just did you want to make sure that it's still pliable and then you can go ahead and cut and fix it because it's easy to cut and you can just fix it right on up so if you're over pour like me, scissors and a, and a soft mold will be your friend. And I really over poured this one. And you can just cut that right on off. But once it gets hard, it's not going to be as easy to cut off. Now it's like a piece of rubber that you can kind of cut. And it's still getting hard as I cut it. So. And then you can just fix that right on up. So there you go. So this is the tan. And then we're going to work with a little bit of resin too. I mean, a uh, little bit of mica powder. You know, I've never poured this mold, but that's cute. <laughs> these are, And these are the redesigned molds from Prima. And I didn't put the one on here, but I will get the name of it for you. And you can see I'm bending this right over. I like to um, take them out when they're a little bit softer. No dirty jokes. <laughs> okay. Oh, she left and came back. I'm going to fix it up. And then there is that mold. But yeah, these redesign molds. Yeah, we're going to start getting some of these in the store. But these, um, yes.
Tiffany. Oh, oh, that's another thing. And I'll let you know. Tiffany, um, as she said, she had bought some tan. So what we do, and I put um, a disclosure in the store. We do not keep these. Oh, these. this is cute. This is another one of the molds. We do not keep the resin in the store. And there's um, two reasons why. One is because we want to make sure there is a shelf life to the resin. So if you get, if you do a crap ton of resin for crafts, if you have a business where you require and you're doing loads and loads of pouring, then we do have the gallon. Let me go pull the gallon up. We do have the gallon resin and I've, we've sold a couple of those. So this is one gallon for part B and one gallon for part A. And that's why I say I, I will usually give, um, if you buy the gallon, I'll give the bottles with it. And But you have to be pouring a, a, a crap ton of resin to do that. Because, again, there is a shelf life to resin. <laughs> it does, doesn't it? I love It's a frame. I love this frame. Yeah, it goes like this. I have to use that. Um, but if you do not, then the 16 ounce, it will be just fine. They last about three to four months and um, shelf life, but it will extend to five months. But Aluma Light, which who makes the Aluma resin, um, RC3 casting resin, um, recommends um, three to four months. That's why when you order it, Okay, so this is hardened and it hardened just like this. <laughs> so you have to let it. It's still a little bit flexible, but it's hard. So I'm going to leave it in here for a while. So what we usually do when you order the resin, we order it from the company. Um, the last order, I think it takes about a week to get to the store and then we send it out from there because we don't like it to, sh to sit on the shelf life. Um, to sit on the shelf. If you um, keep resin in a cooler place, then let's say you put it in the refrigerator. Hey, Jim. Um, then uh, resin will take longer to cure. If you're in a hot room, it takes faster to cure. So there's a couple of little uh, ins and outs with the resin. So if I was to go and put these two bottles in the refrigerator for 30 minutes before I started to use it, it would take about 10 to maybe 12 minutes for it to cure. And you have a, it will extend your, your um, mixing time by about three to four minutes. If you have it in a hot room and, um, <laughs> and you try to use it, then it's going to cure faster. So your mixing time is going to decrease. So let's say if it's a three minute um, mix time, then your mix time may go down to a minute and a half. So temperature matters. It does. Let me see if I see any questions. That's why. I, oh, need more. Yeah. Across the water, I literally go crazy. But, but. I do like the versatility because these, when you are doing mixed media and you want to layer resin pieces, I find the Prima. Oh my God, the Primas. Love the Prima molds. However, I'm going to pull out, and I forgot to pull it out when I was over here. My next favorite will be the Stamperi, Stamperia molds. These are um, kind of like an eight by 10. And they're called PVC and it's a plastic and it's made for clay, but you can use it for mold. What scares people about the Stamperia and which they don't know is Stamperia has holes in it and they may be little holes on the side or whatever. It ain't going to hurt this. You can use it over and over again. You may get a little bit of resin on the backside, but that doesn't matter. So we're going to use these as well. I forgot to pull these out. But so two things. So I'm going to go over just in case anybody new is in here that wants to know is when you're working with resin, um, if you get the plastic measuring cups, 
that can hold resin. You can order them on Amazon. If you order resin from our store, I usually give you two cups free. Um, you can use the dollar store cups. I've used those. Y'all just saw me use it. You can't leave the resin in there. If you have a, a half a cup of the resin and you leave it in there, it's going to get hot, cure, and harden in the cup. And it may um, melt the cup. Especially the really, really cheap ones like this. You can use these, but again, um, you have with the quick resin casting resin, you have about a three minute work time. If you just have a residue of resin left, it's not going to matter much. It's not going to do anything to the cup because this has the residue of the resin left and it's dried and it's cured and it's in the cup and it didn't do anything to the cup. I don't know if y'all can see that. See? And I can go in there and pull it out and reuse this cup if I want. I wouldn't, but because these little cheap cups, yeah, they're one and done. Yeah. <laughs> these you can reuse over and over again. So I wouldn't recommend kitchen cups either unless you want to um, not use them anymore. So, yeah, one and done with this. Um, if you put resin in the refrigerator 30 minutes prior to when you want to use it, it's going to give you a quicker, um, a longer uh, mixing time. And if you're in a hot room, it's going to give you a shorter mixing time. So temperature matters in this case. That is, uh, can you tell us something to use that is eco-friendly? For mixing resin? Yeah, you just get these cups. You can reuse them over and over and over and over. These cups don't go bad. And uh, y'all saw me, and here's the, I don't know if you were in here before. Yes, here's the mini, these are the little medicine cups. You can use these over and over and over again. They'll, the resin will pull right out of there. Um, paper cups, you can use paper cups, uh, like the cheap ones you get from the dollar store. Yeah, you can use them. Okay, so. And I can't, I have fat fingers. I can't reach in there. <laughs> here we go. So these cups, and I'm going to show you again if you weren't um, here earlier. You can use over and over again because once the resin cures, you just pull it right on out. And it pulls out everything. And you have a clean cup and you're ready to go again. So what I usually do is at the bottom, I'll feel if it's still a little wet. And then I'll wipe out the cup and then I just use it over again. So, yeah, so when so Tiffany, when I send you your tan resin, you'll get two cups as well. And then I just wipe it out and it's ready to go again. So I'm going to move this aside and I'm going to do the black resin. And then we're going to work with a little bit of mica powder. So black resin. Oh, my God. Y'all saw if anybody's watched me before y'all saw where. Um, I went goo goo gaga over the black resin. I um, ordered it and it came in tan. And I was like, this ain't black. What, what, what in the world is going on? But I discovered tan resin, which after that, I discovered a Lumilite company. <laughs> and then after that, it took, I'm not playing with you. Lumilite is very picky about their, um, <laughs> online company. So yeah, Crystal did an excellent job um, talking with them and they truly go over everything with you. This is what we like. This is da da da. We need you to, you know, make sure you represent our product. Um, and they don't mind shipping, you know, sh how we do it is we ship it out fresh because we got to. And I, we, we saw them at Creativation. Oh my God. If I had a wood burn, wood turner or woodworking or, hey, Shelly, how you doing? Or whatever. Oh my God. The things that they do with their resin. Holy crap. Um, let's pull out a, oh, everybody's favorite wings. And we're going to use, uh, yeah, let's use this one. Um, the one thing with the Stamperia molds is that um, you cannot use the mica powder in there. 
And that was one, one of the reasons why I wanted the black resin because I wanted black wings. So that's one of the things that you can't use. If you have the silicone molds, you can put red, you can put mica powder, you can put acrylic paints, and then you can pour the resin over top. And we're going to do that in a, in a little bit. So I just wanted to demonstrate the black resin. So again, black resin comes in part A and part B. The part A has the ink in it. And so even though you have um, like um, dyes and stuff, you can put in your resin. You can use um, the reinkers, not too much, because as my safety consultant, Miss June Gallagher, has um, witnessed, uh, yeah, I blew up a couple of resin things. They started smoking and bubbling and doing all sort of crazy things when you add different um, color mediums to it. So yeah, <laughs> you're going to get some stuff. But Illumilite does sell the Illuma dyes, but the color you get from black resin does not compare with anything, with any dyes or anything else. Okay, yeah, this one's done. If I was to try to pull this apart, it would break. So yeah, so like I said, if you want to um, put this around a box, a bottle, whatever you can. So I'm gonna move these aside. Now, again, we'll go with the measuring cup. So part A, the only thing that you gotta be careful with, which I wasn't, was there is ink in part A. So you will get ink everywhere that's why i recommend gloves see the ink that comes out very careful so we're going to measure this with I, I don't know how much we'll just put some in there and that's why i like these bottles as well because as you know they squirt out they're not going to have a whole bunch of mess on there i think so this is 1.7 and it's not going to drip all over the place so these bottles are excellent Part B is the same part as the tan part B, but a little bit darker. No, it's the same. Maybe that's because I don't have a lot. So if you were to get black resin and white resin, you'll automatically have tan resin. I just got in out of time to get a suit. I'm getting my goggles up. June, I pr well, I am going to do a little bit of a, a experiment later, but yeah, go get your goggles. I'm sorry. <laughs> go get the goggles. You might need them. All right. So let me go over that again. If you if you decide that you are a res you want to be a resinologist, you want to do some resin pouring, and you're going to go crazy over it because I'm telling you, once you start, you're addicted. I'm just fair warning. Fair warning. You're going to get addicted. <laughs> so if you get black resin and you get white resin. If you take the B part of the black resin and the A part of the white resin, you will get tan resin. So you don't have to buy all three. If you want white, tan, and black resin, just get the black and the white and you will get tan. If you just want tan resin, and I love the tan resin. It takes the medium so well. Um, especially if you do shabby chic, tan resin is for you. If you like the steampunk and the and the dark arts, black is for you. If you like the, uh, uh, you want to mess with the mica powders and just do any old color, white, and you can paint them as well. All right, so I have 1.7 of part A, and I'm going to zero this out, and I'm going to do 1.7 again. So you don't have, you know, um, cleaning a lot of cups and wasting a lot of cups. Two, two cups will be fine. Uh, let me see, 1.7. Okay. I'm going to do 1.7 again. And 1.7. Hey, I'm on fire. My measurements is good. Get this out the way. Now, this is the thing. Practice with the white resin first because, again, tan and black resin, it ain't going to go clear. So you just got to sort of time yourself 
dead, dead man stuff. And stir it till you think it's sort of mixed. And see, I always do that. That's why I wear gloves, y'all. And get the paper underneath. Oh, FYI, do not get resin on the Tim Holtz mat and let it dry. Or get like um, the sticky resin and leave it there. Because, oh boy, you're not going to like your mat afterwards. It took me forever to get that off. All right, so. It's going to get hot and I'm going to see if I can do this and let it sort of cure in the cup a little bit. See, I just over poured, not watching myself, but that's okay. You'll see what I do with that. Mistakes, mistakes. And I'm going to do this one. Cause I'm going to use that one later. Oh, and this is my favorite. This is the one I sent y'all in the kit. And let's do this one. I think I sent this in the kit too. And then I'm just going to let it sit. If you over pour it a little bit and the cup is hot y'all. So if you were to leave this amount, and I'm just going to wipe this off. If you were to leave this amount in one of these, the cheap cups and let it kind of set up, then yeah, it's, it'll burn a hole because this cup is uber hot right now. But this cup is good. Let me see. Okay, touch the corner. We see everything. What? See, the black resin is a mess. Especially with me, because I'm a mess. <laughs> Jen says she has the goggles and the pillow. Right, Christine? I'm getting ready to make a mess, too, in a minute. A more of a mess. <laughs> okay. Now, I just want to see if I can show y'all this. And I'm going to have to get messy. So, watch this. It is getting really thick. I have it upside down. And there's chunks in there. Okay, I'm trying not to. You see that? Oh, wait a minute. You see that? It's slowly coming out, but it's curing as it comes out. Guess what? It's already, it's starting to cure. So that, you see how quick it started to cure in the cup. So that probably was about, that was probably about three minutes. So I got it in here, but it's still kind of loose in here. So if I touch it, it's going to come off. So you don't want to touch it in here because it's still kind of um, uh, liquidy. But when it's not in there in the cup, it ain't coming out. And that is hard. And it's hot as hell. Sorry. What? Didn't mean to say that. <laughs> Of that part of your computer. Can you hear me now? Yeah, it does, doesn't it? <laughs> Can anybody? So, yeah. hear me? so this is hard, and it's and it's hot as I don't know. All get out. If you like touching hot things, and by all means, get your second degree burn on. Uh, who am I to say don't? But warning, resin gets hot. <laughs> Is Elise talking again? <laughs> yes, I'm trying to. <laughs> well, I actually can see if you're talking because the little thing will come up. I just can't hear you. That is, this has to be the weirdest thing ever. That is so crazy. Everybody else. So, can hear yeah. <laughs> so this is what I mean. You can be in the middle of a pour and it can get um, cure on you as it's coming out the cup. Do you have three minutes to work with? That's it. And y'all can see the blackness of the black resin. It's freaking gorgeous. Talise, are you talking? <laughs> I was. I can see it when, yep, she just said something. I can't hear her. So y'all can hear her, but I can't hear her in the hangout. That is the weirdest thing. Yes, Talise, talk and say. All right, so 
But after it cures, you can just pull it right on out and it'll come right on out. But yeah, that is I'm on purpose the black resin. <laughs> That is the weirdest thing. So after I show you the black resin, Talise, uh, can you turn your camera on? And show everybody. Type it in the chat so I can see it. <laughs> These are still hot. Like, you ever touched like a pot? Oh, there we go. Hey, hey. All right. I'm going to, as these cure into, I'm going to set up for the next thing and put, pop these out and clean up. I am going to click on Talise and she's going to tell you, which of course I can't Cassidy. hear about her bliss box. Cassidy. All right. There you go. Talk away. What? Shut my door. Shut my door. Okay. Am I supposed to be talking now? <laughs> okay, I can't hear anything. <laughs> yes. I have clicked on you and you are supposed to be showing them your bliss box. Oh, cool. I'll see it now. And blurry. Of course, that's nothing new. I'm always blurry. It's an embellishment kit. If y'all can still hear me. <laughs> With Satin roses, lots of appliques, butterflies, flowers, bling, shiny, shiny things, buttons, resin pieces. Oh, there's resin roses, there's little bows, there's little flowers, big flowers, wedding dress appliques, a hat pin, corsage pins. Another flower, ribbon, some lace, trim, more resin pieces, a brooch, metal filigree pieces. Where is Amy? Is Amy here? Pearls and beads and filigree bead caps so you can make your own hat pin and corsage pins. Okay, I'm done. <laughs> Hi, Amy. <laughs> Six inches. a six inch hat pin okay i had to turn on youtube to hear you that is weird that is that that you is the weirdest thing y'all hey amy i cannot hear her but everybody else can weird okay amy can you hear me so, these have cooled down now this is what i was talking about over time when you use the um the um, Stamperia molds, you'll get spillage. That's why I usually put it on here. It does not do anything to the PVC. It's because the resin gets really, really hot. It's still hot, so I'm not going to do anything to it. And and um, so you it'll spill over a little bit. That's okay. That is okay. Now, you see, I over poured, right? 
I felt it, it's still really hot. So while it's really, really hot, take your spillage and pull it off because your spillage is still hot and I have no nails. So it'll come off easier. If it's that big of a, of a spillage, then yeah, you can just go ahead and pull it off while the resin is still warm. And that is one trick to cleaning up your spillage before uh, Amy. you pull out your resin piece. Let me see. I got a little spillage there. And now you're good to go. See? Hi, Amy. How are you doing? Now, this is so when you have the Stamparia molds, which uh, I went a little crazy with them too. I pretty much have every one that they have, including the um, the new ones that they have for the A5s and A4s. The resin gets hot. Normally, when you have silicone molds, you can go ahead and you can you see how flexible they are, and you can peel them back and pull them out like you saw me do before. However, I would recommend when you have the Stamparia molds not to do that. And wait till they fully cure. They're still going to be a little bit soft, but not too soft that you can do what you, you know, if you want to bend or whatever on them. But I would not recommend that because this is the PVC. You know, this one's good to go. So, because this one is going to be, so that's a little bit harder. Now you saw me pull it out when, and I still have a mold in there. <laughs> I haven't cleaned my thing, so I have still have a little white mold in there from before. Sorry. <laughs> so these the are a little bit there. harder because I let this cure all the way instead of pulling it out early because you don't want to do that with the PVC. So there is a difference. You have to treat it different than you do silicone. Um, this is the, now you see the black on that? That is a shiny black. Love it. And this happens to be one of my favorites. And of course, a crown for Queen's Craft, though. So this is the black. So black with a little bit of white in there. It's an Oreo. Sorry. Clean your molds. And my mess. So, the one thing I like about paper is that if you make a mess, yeah, take it and get rid of it. <laughs> and I'm going to move that aside. All right. So, again, here's your black molds. Here's your tan. And am I blurry? Hold on. Make sure I'm not too blurry. Um, yeah, you're a little bit, hey, Amy. Because you never know what the next, next kit's going to have in it. Maybe resin. Maybe that's why I'm doing this class. <laughs> or this uh, tutorial. All right. I need a couple more pieces of white resin. <laughs> to make it universal. Okay, so let me get a little closer. So these are your three resins. You have your black resin, and that gives you a nice black finish. Here's your tan resin. And as you notice, it's still a little bit soft, so you have a little bit of softness, but it's not that flexible. Oops, here's my little piece. This one we bent while it was still soft and it still stayed bent. So if you want to bend it around something, you can. So that's bent. Um, and then here's your white resin. You can, um, let me grab a little bit. Of, I'm going to use this mint. <laughs> this is the new Prima. Uh, Finnebear Art Alchemy um, Mint Sparkle. We do have this in the store and I love it. Hold on. Let me get a clear picture for you mint sparkle 
Okay, so I used this on my project on my egg, and I now I love it to death. Hey, boo! Oh, it looks really, really green, green when you have it, but it's not. And I'm using a um, makeup brush, so I'm just gonna go over some of these so I can show you how the wax looks on each of them. So. And I used the wax on the, um, hopefully I'm not too, there we go. And the brush is going to give you a different thing than your fingers anyway. Let me see if I can get this close up. I love this color. Oh my gosh. So it's going to look one way on, on the white. And so we're going to put it down here and I'm messing with it and I'm going to grab this wing and I'm going to put a little bit of the same color on the, on the tan. And it's going to look another way on the tan. So that's why I say, you know, whatever your style is, and this almost looks like the green that's in here. This almost looks like a blue, but it's just a lighter version of that green. Then I'm going to take the wings on this one. And we're going to color it in here. And this almost looks different as well. Um, I think that is okay. It, Tiffany, I'm telling you, this meant, I, well, I can't even say nothing about any of the colors because I thought, okay, I'm not a, you know, y'all know I like black, I like blues and stuff like that. So the brighter colors I have been experimenting with, and one of them is the Firebird. Um, the other one is, oh, yeah, let's use this one. Um, oh, yeah, got to do this one too. Um <laughs> is the uh, uh, Heather Hills and the Electric Violet. And oh my gosh, I'm loving these colors. So each of the waxes is going to be different on each of the colors is what I'm uh, kind of hinting towards. Is that, let me see if I can get, there we go. Auto and auto focus, there we go. You know, I hate this camera. This is supposed to be the better camera, and I don't like it. Okay, so you see you're going to get more of the black background over the waxes with this, especially with the lighter waxes. If you were to use a darker wax on the same wing, which I'm getting ready to, then I'll show you. The tan is going to give you a whole different color. I think I like the waxes best on the tan myself but they also are pretty on the white. So it's just like when you're doing um, backgrounds, if you have rice paper, you put black, tan, or white underneath rice paper, it's gonna give that rice paper a different tone. And that's what it's doing with the waxes as well. But I did wanna show you on black, and I'm using the same, look at that color, y'all. Oh my gosh, I don't even know if this shows up right. This is the, Electric Violet, holy crud. And I'm using the same little makeup brush. It ain't going to do nothing. And I'm going to go over this. What I like about the black is when you use the darker colors. Uh, let me put this up a little bit. Those darker colors show up so good on the black. Holy. And I don't I don't know the reason. Can't give you a right? That's the electric violet. Which I looked at it and I was like, I don't like that. And then I used it and I was like, oh, I love that. <laughs> so that's the lighter color on black. And you can see, and I use the same brush, same amount of wax. And let me grab this one. And 
this is the same color and this is on the tan. And let me see, I'm put them next together. Oh, let's do this. I'm gonna break it, but that's okay. Ah. Yeah, I kind of broke it, but I need it. And this is the white. So again, you're gonna get three different hues of that same wax color. Uh, there you go. Right, this is the, um, see the first one was the mint sparkle and this one, the electric violet, that purple, oh my gosh. I used it on my egg, I have to show you my egg. And this is the electric violet. Um, I know everybody has seen the uh, Firebird because that's pretty much everybody's favorite. When they came out with this color, whoever uh, was eyeballing this color, I want to thank you because that's a gorgeous color. Uh, blue. You want to see the blue? Question. Okay. Thank you, Amy. Amy, I always can pick out questions. If y'all have a question, put question in all caps and I see it immediately no no you do not not when um if you're just using waxes and that's the color you want no you do not have to put down gesso if you want a okay well let's let's digress a little bit if you only have white resin and you want it to have the black then you can paint it um black and then put down your wax but if you have the black gesso or you or the tan or the white and you don't want um, any other color background, then no, you do not have to put down gesso before you use wax on resin. In fact, I like it. I think that's why I've been playing with these resin colors is because I love the tan effect on pretty much all. Ooh, hey, ombre look. Hey, there you go. Oh, that, oh, wait a minute. That looks good, y'all. Okay, remember that. Electric violet with a little bit of mint is a pretty color together. Okay. Um, <laughs> but, yeah, you don't have to. Only if you want the base color to be different than what you have. What about clay? Waxes on clay? Um, on clay, I would definitely use gesso before you use the waxes on clay. That I did learn. I'm gonna go get the blue. Um, um, okay. Also, um, and I don't know uh, if you were watching when I did the uh, egg. So I did an egg. I've been doing my Easter garden. Wait a minute, who named my thing for me? Somebody in chat named it. Um, Easter garden um, uh, tray and I used the um, electric violet on the outside of it and then on the inside of it and on this part electric violet then on the inside I used the Heather Hills and then I sparkled it with some crafters companion glitter in a jar oh my gosh that oh I can't wait to get that in the store so this was um, the blue on the black resin. Okay, blue on black resin. Yes, because it's porous. You wouldn't use it on the clay. Uh, it's not going to take too much to the clay. In fact, it probably, uh, I don't even have anything that's clay -y that I can show you, but I will. Oh, this is looking so much good. Okay, blue on black resin. So I'm going to use the two blues. So the blues that they have um, for the um, for the um, waxes are old denim. See, this camera don't focus, y'all. It's defective. It is old denim, peacock, and blue lagoon. So those are the three blues that they have. Um, I love the blue lagoon. So we are going to do. And this is all I do with the brush. I've been using it over and over again. It's, it's, let me see if I get some. Nope. 
Let me get something. I don't want to use my fingers. <laughs> so this is the blue. Isn't that beautiful? Let me use the stuff in the top. And holy Talise. Okay, this might be a new favorite. So that is the blue. That's the denim. And then I'm going to put a little bit of the peacock. Oh, yeah, you can gesso all your pieces, all your, um, your, um, this is the peacock color. Um, you can gesso all of your pieces. I've gessoed them and then I've used um, waxes on them. That is the peacock. Oh, wow. Okay. Yeah. Still my favorite. Peacock may still be my favorite. <laughs> That's the peacock. And let me autofocus. I'm thinking there's too much light. That's why I keep on lifting it up. Oh, wait a minute. Yes, that's this is old denim, which is this on the side. This is peacock in the middle. And let me. There we go. That's peacock in the middle. This is old denim on the side. Now we're going to do. Uh, Blue Lagoon. And that's Blue Lagoon. And it's a lighter one, but let me use, let me use my fingers. Peacock is my favorite. Yeah, Peacock is my favorite, too. I like the blue, though. The lighter blue. See, this is a rubber glove, so it's not going to... It'll get on the edges, but not on that smooth part of the resin. If I put a lot, it might. There we go. Yeah, it's not going <laughs> to... Rubber glove. Okay. So, do not use rubber gloves with wax. It don't look right. <laughs> Yeah, we won't do that. That's why I use the brush. So that would be the peacock. With the black resin. So there you go. But that blue does look good on that resin. Woohoo. So that is putting resin on now you can paint them no problem so now that we've done a little bit of uh, resining no it's not a word Let's see Nikki you have right Bo thank you what I actually um, Amy I really prefer tan and I'll tell you why um, well, I don't know. Well, I prefer the tan because tan, if you don't, uh, where's my tan? Oh, I like the way, yeah, that's tan. I like the way the resin looks on tan because it's not stark white where you're going to have that white background on it. And if you're putting it on a project, and it, and if you like sh like shabby chic or the lighter colors and and whatever, then white may be the way to go. I like tan resin because it, let's just look how glorious that looks, and you can use it on anything. It just gives gives it a nice feel. And I'll show you. I'm gonna lift this up and I'll show you. Um. Um. Let me see. So, I'm just going to put this on top. So, this is my little Easter project I'm working. Shameless plug. My Easter project. So, as you can see, 
this is um, the white resin. You can paint the white resin and it's going to, because I don't feel like pulling out paints tonight. That's why I'm showing you this. So what I did right here is I poured the white resin and then I, when I put it up against the project, I didn't like the white resin. So I decided to use um, painted tan with the impasto paints, um, the same color that, um, that usually tan resin is. And as you can tell, it's pretty much the same color. Let me see. There you go. And I did that with the frame and then I did it with the edging of it as well. Tan resin just kind of just looks better. And sometimes you don't have to, oh, did I just put wax on my camera? I think I did. Oh. <laughs> but sometimes with the tan resin, you don't have to do anything else to it. And I wish I would have poured this in tan and it would have been better. Yes, the purple. I love this purple egg. I don't know what I was thinking, but I love the purple egg. This I poured in white resin, but I did a heavy, uh, let me see. Let me undo because my freaking camera doesn't like to focus right. So this one I poured in white resin, but did I, oh, they're underneath there. But I made sure that I um, covered it heavily, heavily in the wax. So I didn't see any of the white in the background, that it was all resin. So, yeah, that tan. I mean, if you don't, if you have white resin, you can easily paint it. Um, this one, I, it's sticking. This one, I, has white resin edges because I did prefer that with this egg. And you'll see that it has a little bit of the white resin around it. But this is the mint sparkle I used. Oh, my gosh. There we go. But I wish I would have done the flower in the in the tan. So that's the other egg. And then I didn't put anything on this egg. This one I actually sprayed with Lindy's, which I was practicing. This actually is my favorite one. And I sprayed it with Lindy's, and it came out really gorgeous. And I think I just have too bright of a light. There we go. So then I'm going to finish tomorrow. I'm going to finish the, um, <laughs> that's, yes, it is. It's my owl egg. Y'all, if you ever want to have an owl in a project, use the Prima wings with the Prima. Um, uh, I'll put the combination down, but it looks like a freaking owl. And I didn't know this until I put this together, but I'm going to be using this combo a lot. But, the red oh and then y'all saw i bent the resin on the egg i haven't laid it down yet so let me move this out the way and i'm going to do the bunny on um tomorrow on live i think or pre-recorded i'm not sure so as you can tell on the e on the egg it's bent around on the egg so what i did is i took the um i took the um uh, frame after it was curing for a little bit made sure it was still soft and I bent it around the egg and then I just kept it there until it hardened a little bit more so and this is the egg that I'm putting in here I don't know what else I don't think I can need to do anything else to it it's my this is my um, Easter garden tray so it's all about flowers and pretty things y'all know I don't do pretty things I like black <laughs> but and it's for Easter so um yeah I'm gonna finish that later and wait till you see Christine how I'm gonna do the bunny oh Carla said live please I will I'm going to use pink what don't have a heart attack I'm warning I'm pre-warning you Christine so you won't have a heart attack <laughs> oh and another one I liked was the Heather Hills that's the Oh, Lord, this is all cockeyed. That's the one I used on the egg was the Heather, uh, Heather Hills. There we go. So that is using wax. And you saw that the frame looked kind of tannish. That's because I used tan paint on it and painted it. And it didn't take away from the detail. You just can't be globbing the paint up there. 
and and you got to let it dry i would if you're going to paint resin my suggestion is to um gesso the resin piece then paint it and um don't keep going over and over and you know sometimes I, I do this a lot and I've learned that you will scrape the paint up because it hasn't dried on the resin yet so gesso it make sure the gesso is is fully dry and then paint it and then you you should be fine with it oh yeah you're gonna love me after this Christine I'm using pink <laughs> I know don't have a heart attack though <laughs> um so is the trim pearl with rhinestone for which egg? The owl egg? Or, oh. Which, which one? Okay, so that's the three colors. Now, if you want to do resin, and I'm going to pour, I'm going to move these aside, and I'm going to pour one more resin with uh, let's do white because I want to dye it so I like doing a lot of angels <clears throat> and um, um, as you can tell I'm a woman of color <laughs> don't get scared no just kidding but you know they don't have a lot of brown or black angels so when um, I was looking over what Illuminite had and they showed um, that they had dyes. So I love that. So these are the, if this auto don't, okay, I'm done with this camera. So they have Caucasian dye. They have Native American dye. Oh, wait a minute. Where's my other dye? Native American. Oh, it, this is right. And African American. So if you have an angel, and or a uh, face mold or whatever you can actually color it to your taste and the caucasian you can make it as peachy or as dark with the native american as a light tan to a dark kind of like um i liken it to a um a pot <laughs> um i forgot i'll show you and then the African American is a, a light brown to a very dark brown. So they have those. And then um, I wonder if I still have it. I think I might have given it away. Hold on. Ah. So I was mixing some and made a terracotta <laughs> with the um, African American and the Native American. It's a brown, but it's almost like a reddish brown. So it's almost like a terracotta. Will you be showing how to do the extra? Oh, <laughs> oh my God. Oh, I was, uh, was working on project and not reading chat. <laughs> Hold on. Okay, so yes, I do love the skin tone colors, you know, because you know, you're doing, you're doing projects and crafting for people who are buying your projects. And I asked, um, this lady wanted me to do a project for her little girl and she happened to be, um, Spanish. And then the other lady happened to be African American. And, um, so I had angels, but they weren't in their color. So, you know, it's, it's nice to have if you're doing a lot of projects for different people. Okay. So Amy, I will show you the extra large lady, but we won't be pouring her tonight because this takes a whole lot of, whole lot of. So we will be doing a molding one-on-one -on -one class sometime soon. I, uh, resin was easier to start with. So I found a um, statue and it was in Hobby Lobby. And so I really, really liked it. And it was very easy to mold because it had a flat back. And what I mean by a flat back is that it was um, flat on one side. So it was easier to mold. So <laughs> this is the mold I made of it. It actually has, and I've, I've done um, clay in this and I've done 
um, resin in this. It takes a lot of resin, just to let you know. And it actually has, um, I put glue in the top. It actually has a shell at the top that she's holding. And I actually extended the bottom, which is a mermaid bottom. When you're doing clay, you can smooth out the scales. When you're doing resin, you really can't. But what I did is I wanted a shorter length for the um, body. So I put hot glue in here and then I kept the, um, the piece so I can put it back in when I need it. And then I did a hot glue for the shell so I can keep that piece. But, um, yeah. <laughs> oh my God, Carla, that clay took a week to dry. I had to flip her over and keep flipping her over. And then I kept the upstairs hot so it would dry. Yes, I did this mold. I actually did, probably made it too big. But again, this is my first time ever trying to mold something. So this thing is thick and it's huge. And even though it looks kind of thin at the bottom, it, it works just fine. And, um, but I'm going to try it again. I have another statue that I want to mold. So, yeah. And I've done clay and I've done resin in this. I want to do a black resin with, um, her, but I want to do it only with this part. So the reason I did this is because, and when you think of molding, especially something like this, cause it's going to take a lot of mold to do this. I use the plat 10 from Illumilite. And when we get into molding and get, you know, interested parties, we'll start putting this in the store as well. But you can take this part and take off the arms and you got one mold. You can have her with the arms up without this, which you saw me use on the hop, and you have one mold. You can take the arms off and just and have more of a body. And that's another mold because guess what? I got a plan for this that's going to knock your socks off. Yes, yes, yes. Without the arms. So, yeah, we're going to use her again. Um, it's not very hard, Carla. Um, we are going to, we're doing, um, we're going to do, a, I'm doing the resin as the first class. And then I'm going to do a molding class on making uh, uh, what you can use for, um, to make molds what you can use uh if you have a big mold like this i did actually made like a um box mold um uh, mold box and poured it um so there's different things you can do what you need to do how you need to place it and because i have another mold i made <laughs> and i messed with it and yeah it wasn't too pretty but wait did i have it did i put, put it over here oh I made a mold out of a piece of jewelry and I don't know where I put where I put it but it was it's a dragonfly and I love it and I don't know where it is I can lose stuff in front of me y'all all the time all the time but yeah so mold making will be uh will be another class all right, so the other thing I want to show you is, uh, let me see, let's do this one and let's do this one. So this is one of my favorite molds too. I haven't actually used it for anything. It's kind of a weird mold. It's a soap mold. Hey, Donna, where's Donna? She does soaps, but this is the mold that it does it does like curved wings so i'll find a use for it pretty soon i tried to make it look like dirty wings don't like this so i just use it to show people but this is this wing and it's very deep in here and it's very hard to get out so i'm going to show you this one then i'm going to show you this one with the mica powder and i've done this class before with mica powder um this is Pewter. And well, let's do something smaller, actually. Uh, did we all pass? Yes, you did, June. I loved all y'all's um 
uh, canvases. Oh my God. Y'all ready for intermediate? We are putting that together as we speak. Oh, let's do this one. Uh, this is, and I know this one's in the store, Stars and Moons, which is the new Finnebear um, Prima Mold. So, you can use acrylic paints and you can use mica powder in your molds. Um, acrylic paints is a little harder to 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 um, get out of the molds. I prefer the mica powder. This is actually pewter. Um, and as you can tell, I haven't used this. <laughs> but I always wonder what the pewter would look like. And when I did, I got these little brushes. That I, I think they were at the Dollar Tree, or they may have been at um, Illumilite, but they're not that expensive. And what you do is you dust in your um, mold. And if you have a little bit left over, just knock it out. It's not going to hurt your mold. It wipes up very easy. I was going to save that little bit. Because I'm cheap and I'm putting it back in there. <laughs> and it ain't going up. So we're going to use this. And make sure you get all in the corners. Because believe me, the um, resin will pick up all the mica powder. It's in the store. Unless they sold out. Um, let me check. But yeah, we ordered These went like hot potatoes. This one, uh, the uh, cogs and, was it the cogs and wheels? Mechanica. Yep. All right. Okay, I think I got the right mix. And we're going to do a short one with this one. And then I'm going to show you a trick with the stamp. All right, so I did not see what I put it at. So, so I'm glad I got my little thing right here. Point two, okay. Because I was not paying attention. Point one. I'll look at chat in a minute. Okay, when are you going to get to point two? There we go. Or, if you're very good at eyeballing, you can just put them up together and eyeball it. That don't look the same to me. I'm putting a little bit more in there. Good night, Laurel. Oh, you can just put them together and get at eye level. And if you're good, you're good. So, I'm just going to mix these two together. And when you think, because you would think this would take all that resin, but it's actually too much. And again, if you have the white resin, it will turn clear as you mix it and you know it's ready. If you have the tan or the black resin, I would mix it for about 30 seconds and then you'll have two and a half minute um, work time with it. So that looks about clear to me. So I am going to pour it on in. So there we go. Uh oh, and I got left. See, I told you I ne I never know how to uh, put this in there. Well, that has a little bit of mica powder in, so we'll see if it'll pick up the mica powder. So you see how much of that little bit of point one ounce resin will last you, and I can do a whole bunch of these molds. And it's starting to get hard, and we'll do a little, and we'll do a little. And we'll do a little. I think Nikki has a mold. So I did what? Point one resin. So I did one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight of these little molds. So yeah, it'll last you. So as this cures, I am going to do I have one more thing with this resin. That's going to scare June. Good night, Laura. Have a nice night. Glad you could stop by. All right. So, 
and I'm going to use the black resin for this. Sorry, June. This is going to scare you. Okay, ladies, start guessing how many molds. So while this cures, um, and be careful if you had, if you, if you <laughs> she's oh shoot. Yeah, I, I'm the only one that can't hear you, Talise. Sorry. So if I'm over talking you, I don't know if I am. If you're over talking me, I don't know if you are. All right. So be careful. If you want to move um, a mold out of the way and do another mold, I would wait for about a minute or two until it starts curing, and then it's not going to spill out. <laughs> Everybody start guessing how many molds Nikki owns. I don't know what she just said. I see the little dots going up when she talks. What? What are we getting? Okay. All right, Talisa, I'll talk to you later. What are, what are you doing behind behind my back? Because I can't hear you. <laughs> oh, she's giving away something. Okay. <laughs> what? All right. Y'all fast. This is like the weirdest freaking show. <laughs> All right, so as that cures, and I don't know what's going on. Oh, how many molds do I? Well, Joanne might be close. It's probably between Carla and Joanne. I haven't counted. But to be on the safe side, a lot of them are small. All right, so. Oh, this is fresh, too. This is a mixed media uh, stamp, and I'm going to mold it. And I'm going to use it on a project. That's why I'm going to do it here. June, don't tell her. <laughs> All right. So, as you can see, this is cured a little bit. So, I can move it. And I know I'm not going to spill it. So, I'm going to put it aside. And then we're going to look at that in about five minutes. This one is going to be an absolute mess. Okay. So, I learned a couple of things. I'm just going to use a new cup. One, <laughs> that you have to be patient with this. And two, I need part A first. It's going to be messy. Or the little pieces? The whole piece? I don't know. Well, I made a lot myself, too. So, um, I think I'm going to do about... I think about eh, maybe a little bit more. I'm gonna do one ounce because I can use something in another mold if I need to. Hey kids. Alright. I'm gonna get a mold ready just Penny? in case. Yes. Ha ha ha. New mold. Oh, Penny. <laughs> Penny, can you hear me? I'll put this off to the side. And we're going to need to move everything out the way because, again, this is going to be a mess. I hear you fine. Uh, Nikki, do you hear me? Um, Y'all just giving away crap on this shit. <laughs> uh -oh, Penny. We're in the okay. same boat time, man. Everybody can hear us. So I have a two-minute working time. Y'all remember me saying that, right? So I'm going to mix it for about 10 to 15 seconds. Hey, Penny! <laughs> I came on. What the? Oh, I that is the weirdest thing. What did I do when I set it up? Okay. All right. Well, I'm no longer can't allowed hear to you. set up um, live shows. <laughs> <laughs> yes, you can use them, June. But you have like you have a three minute working time with resin. You're going to need to pour it before the three minutes. Okay. Got my resin working. It's getting hot, and I'm going to hold this. And the hotter it gets, the more I know it's working. I think I over poured it, so I'm going to pour a little bit in here. Okay, and I see it's getting thick. All right, and I'm going to do this one. Okay. 
Okay, now I know it's getting thick. Now I'm going to pour it over the stamp. This is going to be a mess. You have to wait at least to the two minute mark to when it gets really, really thick. I wouldn't do this with clear stamps, y'all. I'm not condoning doing this with your stamps. All right. Now, I'm going to let this cure. See, June, not that bad. Hi, Dana. Okay, who's here? I see a Dana. Hi, Dana. Oh, hey, Dana. I see her now. All right, so, again, it started curing in the cup, and it ain't coming out. So, I can put that cup aside. I think I can take off my gloves now, y'all. I don't think I'm going to make a mess anywhere else. Hey, Mars. Mars. It has to be on Nikki's end. <laughs> All right. And again, oh, this is too new. Nope, that hasn't cured fully in the cup. So I, y'all see me switch from one cup to the other. And the reason why I give two cups... Is because it'll cure on the outside it'll be a nice little thin layer so here and then you can pull it out and then it but sometimes it'll be kind of soft and gooey ishy on the on the um, bottom side of it until that cures but this washes out and I'll show you while all this is curing I'll get a paper towel and the only thing I do is I take a little bit of water I spray in my cup and my dog is sitting there like what are you doing mom and then I wipe it and it comes up that's on the outside of the cup evidently nope that's on the inside if you need to put a little fingernail grease oops, behind it you can but you see these cups they clean right out even to the bottom and it's nice and clean but I'm not gonna sit here and clean a cup on camera so well I just did but I'm not gonna continue <laughs> and you can peel out the top <laughs> and then there's uh, where you poured or over poured or it came out on the bottom it just peels right on off so you can clean your cups and reuse them all right so while these are doing their thing I'm going to take these out. Oh, they're still gooey too. They're not absolutely cured. <laughs> you can see the mica powder got on there that was on the extra one. Good question. Okay, still a little bit of time. So, when you are pouring, do not use um, do not use a clear stamp. You need to have either a red rubber stamp, mixed media stamp that is rubber, and you cannot let this fully cure. It's not ready to... I still got mess on my fingers, and I wore gloves. How is that? Oh, yeah. Could you take a flat spatula and spread it out more? Yes, as long as it's a silicone spatula, um, Amy. All right, so I'm just lightly touching it. And this is hot. And it's soft. But the reason I'm doing this is because I'm going to need to pull this up before it fully hardens. And this is where... You have to pay attention and not leave it. How do I know? Because I've left it before. And I'm going to get rid of this. And I might roll over the dog. All right. 
there is a fine line when doing this. It's not done. It's not done, but it's not hard. So if you see it, it's still kind of soft. But I can peel it up. It's a little bit light, hard. It's a little bit um, hot to the touch right here. So I'm going to give it a, about another minute until it's cooled down to where it's not burning, burning. This is still hot. This is ready to go. This is not, yep, yeah, that's ready to go. All right. So this is the one done with um, mica powder. Uh, let me fix the thing. And this is pewter. My brushing wasn't very good. So you can see I put <laughs> droplets of the mica powder on here, but actually I like that. And there we go. And my mixing wasn't very good, but that's the pewter. They also have um, pewter, they have uh bronze they have the black pearl let me see if i i think i have one or i've already done it in the black pearl if i'm not mistaken and i got about 30 seconds left on that one. Oh crap that just went behind I don't have one I did in the black pearl crap. Okay, this one's ready to come out. So it's hot, it's still hot, but it's still rubbery. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to peel the edges. And you see the foam, it does get on the side of your foam. So if you care about that, then you don't want to do this. And it's just like peeling up. Just very carefully. Because you can tear it. Because it's still soft resin. And it's a thin layer. Ta-da! You have not ruined your stamp. You will see little uh, droplets of resin. You probably want to get that out. Um, I've gotten mine out after the fact. But check this out. What? What, what, what? I have a resin stamp. That's what I'm going to call it, a resin stamp. So let me see if I can get a little closer. Get a little closer. There we go. Well, I don't like the way that looks on the background, so I'm going to get a piece of paper. Right, Carla? Right, Amy? And you can do this with white. You can do it with, um, oh, that might not be even better. I think it's just my lighting, so I have to turn it to the side. So um, there we go. Let me get the other side for you. So this is the stamp, and then this is the resin piece from the stamp. So I'm going to take, of course, I'm going to take a little bit of wax, and I have adjusted this, um, Tiffany. Yes, it is perfect for gears. Yes, Amy, I know you're going to want this. <laughs> She, she's going to pee in me later on. Could you make me one of those and send it, please? Oh, wait a minute. Let me make sure I autofocus auto it. There we go. What kind of stamp is that? We do have the Adonis um, stamps. This is the Stamperia um mixed media stamp and it's called um mixed media gears 
by um, Stamperia. And this is in a store. I did this, I absolutely fell in love with. So I know if I liked it, a lot of more people are going to like it. And it's a mixed media stamp. So it doesn't have the regular backing of, of like acrylic stamps where you can stick them on um, a stamping platform and and do the normal things. This is literally meant to use a mixed media on, you know, take it and you just press it down. It has cushion. So it gives you a little cushion for the pushing. That didn't sound right. Okay. <laughs> um, I would only, you can use your red rubber stamps. I'll show you the other stamp that I practiced on that I used. Um, last night or the night before. I, Penny, when did I do this? Right? Well, the hop is over with, so I, I can push. <laughs> push on the cush. <laughs> and it doesn't have to be perfect, especially if you're using this as a background in a mixed media project. You know, the the unevenness of it is if you want it even, you can put the resin from from edge to edge. I didn't mind. Don't care. All right. So I use a little uh, this is an old wax, but still one of my favorites. This is the um, Art Alchemy White Gold. And look at that. Now, if you have a background. Oh, that turned out really good. <laughs> yeah, right, Talise? <laughs> I don't have a, my, my, oh, oh, wait a minute, hold on. Pushing on the cushion and a pulsating camera. <laughs> oh, let me stop. Okay, you know, after I've been on for a couple hours, I start getting really silly. So, again, this is another usage. Let me let tell you that it does not stay flexible. Right now, it's flexible. So, if you want to use this and you want to, let me grab something, and you want to put it around something like this, then you would want to do that as soon as you demold it. Unlike deflowering, it's demolding. Hey, Barb. <laughs> Bye, Bo. Hi, Barb Higgins. So, this is what you can do. Now, the one I did last night, I did with a Crafter's Companion stamp, and I did a Steampunk Lady. And I did silver on her. But the cool thing now, if you can. Hear that? This is fully cured. I can snap it in half or I can snap pieces off. You hear that? But it's hard as a rock. Right now, this is not. You can bend it. You can do what you need to it to put it on your project. So, one, if you're going to do this technique sort of thing, then you're going to have to know what you're going to be putting this on. Is it going to be a flat surface? Or is it going to be um, something where you're going to need to uh, bend it around on? Um, I'm going to do this for all the all the um, Stamperia Adonis stamps, especially the um, uh, uh, the elephant. Oh my God, I can't wait to do this for the elephant. And then I'm going to use this as the background, and I'm going to put the elephant over top there. But anyway, um, let me see. Uh, did I miss any questions? Okay. So, but when you're doing this, you can take this, you can put it on your canvas. Um, you can use mixed media glue and you can adhere it to your canvas. Um, I wouldn't, I, you, I would use glue, hot glue, but I would use the Gorilla hot glue sticks just because, but you want to use like a mixed media glue or something that's going to adhere to the resin and adhere to the canvas. And then you can put this, another resin piece on top. You can layer, you can put, uh, let's just grab some stuff. Oh, if you want to put a frame, 
So now we're getting into the layering. And I'm saying this not for, you know, other people that kind of know about that, but I have a um, uh, mixed media class going on. And our next thing is intermediate. And we're going to learn about layering. So that's why I'm mentioning that. So don't be it. I don't know why she's telling me about layering. I know how to lay. <laughs> um, let me see. Oh, Pepto, what? Three, yes, 3D matte medium, mixed media gel. Um, I use the mixed media gel from Stamperia. Y'all know I love Stamperia along with Crafter's Companion. Oh my God, Crafter's Companion. But, um, I'm going to start doing some cards and some um, projects with Crafters Companion pretty soon. But um, mixed media gel, um, I think um, Prima has their matte medium gel. Uh, let me see. Yes. They have their um, they have their soft matte gel, which is, this is the Art Basics um, from Finnebear. This is also from Finnebear, and this is the 3D matte gel. So they, this is good to use as well. If you're adhering like metals and stuff like that, I would consider resin. I would treat resin like a metal is what I would do because of the slick surface on the back. Okay. But this is a cool technique. I haven't, I, I haven't seen it. Y'all know I hardly watch YouTube videos because y'all always sending them to me. Uh, that's okay, Barbara. We'll show you what we did. But um, if if someone has done it there before, then, um, you know, I haven't seen it. I've seen it done with like paste and uh, clays and stuff like that. So I was like, well, if you uh, get the um, the resin time down pat, you can do it with resin, too. But mind you, it, there it's. <laughs> It's sort of like, you know, like I said, you have to, the reason why I showed you where it thickened in the cup before is because you have to know what time limit that you have working with resin so you can kind of get that timing right, almost down pat. That's why I poured a little bit out here and when it started getting thick, I knew it was time to pour it on the stamp. Don't use clear stamps. Okay, this is another resin mold. <laughs> and I haven't, um, oh, see the black is hard to see. Sorry. Let's um, do a little <laughs> flowering with it so you can see it. Hey, this brush holds a lot of wax too. I'm not wasting wax. This is one of the Prima molds. You can use it as like a, um, uh, what do you call it? An edging. And then this one is the flower one. And I just broke that. I do not know my own strength. Huh. Sorry. Well, if you have this mold, be careful because the little in-betweens are very, I didn't let it harden all the way, but that's what that one looks like. So these are the two molds that I did over here. But this was done on the stamp. I'm so excited. And you can layer. So um, what I was saying is you can go and you can put wings on it. And these are wings that I did in black earlier, um, Barbara. And then I colored them with a different resin to show how the resin looked on black. And I will bring out the wings for you to see. So I did this one in the mint. And, oh, <laughs> I did this one in the mint too, but I went over in purple and I like the combination. And then I went over, where's the other one? Oh, and then I went over this one in mint. But it again, it's gonna show you three different colors because this was done on black, this was done on tan, and this was done on white. And the same with like the purple. Here's the purple on black. Oh, that was the blue. Was it the blue? Nope, that was the purple on black. This was the purple on tan. And then that was the purple on white. So it's gonna give you three different hues of that color. So, Talise, 
Why are you having beads in your bra? <laughs> so, and then I showed, I think I colored all my black resin, but this is the tan resin. This, see how dirty my hands are? And I got a meeting tomorrow too. Crap. <laughs> um, that's the tan resin. This is the white resin. And I think I colored all the black resin. But, and then this is the black. Oh, no, I didn't. And, well, this is the black resin. And then we did black resin, white resin with a pewter mica powder. And you can use any mica powder for this technique. And then we colored um, some of the resins with the waxes. And just, you know, so I can just show you how they show up differently on the waxes. Then we took resin and we poured it on a rubber stamp, not the clear stamps, not the, was it polymer stamps? <laughs> Lower it to lease. Tiffany, every look, if y'all at work, I'm always in meetings. I am. I hate meetings. If I can avoid them, I try to. In fact, sometimes I ditch meetings. Where were you? Oh, we had a meet. <laughs> I hate it because there is no, like, sometimes they're just talking about nothing and you're like, why am I here? I hate them. <laughs> anyway, um, so you can take your resin pieces and, you know, you can, oh, that's kind of cute. I wonder if you can, oh, that is real cute. Hey, y'all. Wait a minute. I need something to put underneath it so I can see if it'll stay. That's kind of cute. <laughs> Does he need a little body? He needs a body. Can that be his neck? Yep, that can be his neck. And then we're going to give him some wings. You know I like my wings. Anyway. <laughs> Right, Tiffany? And let's put them in the thing. Anyway, so, I mean, you can play around with it. But you already have your background kind of. And you can paint, you know, if you gesso. So if you do this with the stamps, you can do a white gesso, black gesso, clear gesso on the um, background. And you can actually put like the rust effects. You can drip it down. Oh, I'm going to try rust effects on this. See, it's already starting to harden. You can do the rust effects or whatever. You've already got your background on your canvas or your, your mixed media page, your journal. And, you know, it's thin enough. This is what I like about this. It's thin enough you can put in your journal and not bulk it up. And you have a glorious background for your journal. Uh-oh, Nikki layers rather than like some of us layer. Right, Joy? Hey, I want to learn how to layer um, uh, appliques that I'm going to attempt to <laughs> on this bunny. It's just going to be funny. But, yeah, you can, you can just layer it up. But the good thing about it is you already got your background. And, you know, because how many times have you looked at this and been like, man, that would have been a cool... That would have been a cool stencil or I wish, you know, or I'm doing a canvas and if I stamp it, it's not really going to look right. You can't stamp it in paint because it's not really um, um, uh, thick enough. So, yeah, I'm going to have to clean out these uh, things and they'll come out. I just water it up and wipe it off. But um, so that's why, you know. Some of the cool stamps that you have that are rubber stamps, red rubber or that mixed media white rubber that Stampe Stamperia has, use those. Do not use it on your clear stamps. Tiffany, it's not going to be a funny bunny. Okay, I'm going to give y'all a sneak peek at my bunny. But I am going to end the resin class for now so I just wanted to make sure that anybody didn't have any questions about resin
Okay, so while y'all thinking of questions, I'm going to reiterate for those who just came in or stopped in late. One, you can use your Dollar Tree cups. These are, I've demonstrated this as I got my cups, 56 cups from the dollar store for a dollar. The only thing is you have a three minute working time. Once you put your resin in your cup and mix part A and part B, you have three minutes to work with it. That means if you want to do a six ounce part A and six ounce part B, I would not recommend it. I would recommend probably pulling out two or three molds and um, doing up to about three ounces part A, three ounces part B, and then pouring your molds and then mixing again. If you do want to do a crap ton of molds all at once, my recommendation is to get the Aluma Light Slow Set Casting System. You have seven minute work time, but 30 to 60 minutes demold time. It's going to set up longer than what the fast cast resin is. You have the resin that you get, that you can get in the Michaels, which is a good resin. And it comes in um, eight ounces for part A, eight ounces for part B. The one that we sell in the store comes in 16 ounces part A, 16 ounces part B, which gives you a total of 32 ounces. If you are somebody who manu who does a lot of resin pieces for projects that you're going to sell, then I re recommend getting the gallon because a gallon has eight 32, eight 32 ounces in it or something like that. So you would have to buy like six boxes of the 32 ounce to equal a gallon. But that's only if you are doing a lot of resin pouring because there is a shelf life to resin. You will find um, it will work. It will take longer to set up and the part B will start crystallizing a bit because that there is a shelf life to resin. It's about three to four is what Illumilite says, three to four. And I've had um, resin that has lasted five months, no problem but they're recommended is three to four months. So what we do, if you order resin from the store, we order it from the manufacturer. When it gets here, we send it straight out to you so you can get as much time as possible of the fresh resin. <laughs> um, so the best cups to use, and this is what I recommend, is these cups right here. Um, I have some coming with um, the next Illumilite order, and I will put them in the store for like uh, two for a dollar or two for a dollar fifty. I'm not sure yet. I'll have to do a cost analysis on it, but it ain't going to be much. If you order resin from the store, I give you two cups free. If you order the gallon, I give you two cups free, and I give you extra bottles because you don't want to be pouring a gallon. Well, unless you got nice muscles, which I you know I'm, I'm I'm weak in the arms. I can't be pouring a gallon resin and be accurate. So yeah, <laughs> I order. <laughs> I get extra of these. Question. So for the lady, would I order the slow cast resin kit? Um, no. You you actually don't have to for the lady. For the lady, um, um. What I did is I, I had an old um, uh, Tupperware, and it was uh, about this big by that big, probably six by five inches and about four or five inches deep. And I didn't know how much resin it would take to cast that lady. So it took about three of these cups per side, per each side. So it's it's a big resin. So I will I will mold I will um, make a resin piece for you, and you'll just have to mold it yourself. And we'll have a molding class on how to make your own molding with silicone and cornstarch, and and or we'll use um, the amazing uh, putty or email or whatever. We'll find something in Illumilite. But 
like I said, the, the Alumilite resin takes the waxes straight to the resin. You can take it straight to the resin. You don't have to gesso it. However, with pa with paint, I would gesso it first before you paint it, and I would make sure it was thoroughly dry. Um, this resin, let me find a clean finger, is not set right yet. You can um, heat set it, or you can just let it dry overnight. The one, my eggs are already dried. Um, once you put it on, I wouldn't be rubbing it or, or rubbing it against anything because you don't want to mess up your wax. So you do either have to heat set it or let it dry. But once it dries on there, the wax is not going to come off. If you want to put a transparent whatever over top, you can do that as well if you want to, a varnish or whatever. Uh, question, can we buy the empty bottle separately? Uh, Amy, if you want to buy an empty bottle, I will make sure I get some empty bottles and put them in the store. I already have some, so I will put what I have in the store. Um, for lady, would I order slow cast resin? Oh, no, slow cast. Yeah, I'd answer that. You don't need a slow cast resin kit. You just need to work fast. No, just kidding. <laughs> um, if you if you think you're not going to be able to stir it, I took um like a dowel stick. I took a long stick because it's and or you can use a um tongue depressor, a longer tongue depressor. Um, it does not take much to mix the resin. And so I was able to mix that big amount of resin and pour it into the lady. And then I figured I didn't have enough. So after I poured that first batch, I poured some more and then I needed just a little bit more. So I made a third batch and then I poured that. So if you pour the resin on top of the resin um, while it's starting to cure, it'll all cure together and look seamless. It's, it's not a big deal. But if you think you are that slow in working, then I will make sure that um, I put that um, the availability of the slow cast, um, the slow um, set resin in the store for you. Um, I don't trust myself with cups. <laughs> yeah, these cups are, yeah, these cups are better. And plus I like the pour spout because as you saw, when you use these kind of cups, they don't, you have to kind of squeeze them a little bit to pour them, but they're going to kind of go over the edge anyway. They even go over the edge on the pour spouts. But when, and this is why I like the pour spout, when you're doing intricate, this is another Prima mold. This is one of their um, newer uh, key molds. Um, but when you're pouring and you have these intricate or small areas, then it helps to have the pour spout because you can put it right up to the um, thing and just easily pour it in there. So that's why I like the pour spouts. Another reason, and I will show you another mold because I like my molds as you can see. But, oh, you know something? Let's cast this mold real quick because we got those in the store. <laughs> um, let me, oh. These are the ones, um, this is the one that I used on, uh, it's another redesign mold, and I'm sorry, I, d I did not write the names. I did do have the names of some of them on the back, but these are the ones I just got, so I don't haven't put the names on the back yet, and I don't feel like digging through all these. <laughs> but um, this is another one, and you see how thin and intricate this is. When you're pouring, you usually pour into the big parts and make sure that it pushes out, but sometimes it's not going to push out all the way. So you'll have these little channels that need a little bit. That's where this comes in because of the fact you can put it right up against there and it's going to pour in that little spout without spilling all over the place. And it, 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 it's a technique. It's a technique. Um, I'm just going to use one of these cups so I can show you again. For those of you who just came, you can use dollar store cups. As soon as I find my uh, scale, and then we're going to pour this mold. About the tall bottle with the nozzle. Tall bottle with the nozzle. What tall bottle with the nozzle? You're talking about this, right, Amy? Is that what you're talking about? Yeah, 
those the the when you buy the aluminum this is the bottle that comes that you it comes with if you buy the gallon you're not going to get these bottles but if you buy the gallon we give you two of these bottles free so these are the these are the extra bottles that we have in the store and i always mark this one with a black piece of paper so i know it's part b and this is part a because if you write on it the resin's going to take it off anyway so yeah so these are the bottles that um we have in a store and we also have these cups and uh we have these cups i'll put it in the store so if you want to get them you can purchase them because and i don't know if you were here earlier these cups you can reuse you see how dirty and messy this cup is so when the resin cures and dries you just peel it on up and reuse it and wipe it out and reuse it and i'm not going to wipe it out right now i've actually left some there i have a stack of them that i just i'll pull them out but then i was like i'll clean them later <laughs> um but yeah we put, give you these cups um well actually in fact i do got to clean that one out because i want to use right white resin but let me show it and i don't know if you're here there but these clean right out so you can just wipe them out and this is on the outside so you just peel that up as well so these cups are reusable and then even if you have it on the side it wipes right on out so i just don't feel like it takes a little bit to clean them but when you're lazy and you're doing a show you use disposable <laughs> um we're gonna use let's use tan resin because i got a little bit of tan resin left so let's just use it um did i just hear no for some reason well i can't hear anybody actually <laughs> and if you finish with the bottle what i do is i actually save my bottles because i can um as I told, um, I don't know if you heard that before, but if you order, like, I didn't know this <laughs> until I actually got the black, but the black part B and the tan part B are the same. So they're the same thing, the same um, formula. The only difference between the, the tan, um, oh, and then the um, part A is the same as the white. So you, if you order black and you order white, you can make tan, FYI. And I'm talking about buying just, oh yeah, you can buy empty bottle. Well, yeah, you can buy empty bottle if you want. What do you want an empty bottle for? May I ask? <laughs> I'm just curious now. Okay, 1.7. I will load it up in the store and just saying, what's 1.7, 3.4? We just got the Ranger in with the distress. Oh, I put, put that in the thing. We just got the Ranger order in with the distress oxides and the pearls. I'm so excited. I get to play with that. We got the heat guns and the craft mask. Oh no, you you can't put vodka in a resin bottle and go out about carrying resin. Oh, oh my god, Betty. <laughs> yes, it is my <laughs> Oh. Oh no. <laughs> no, Tiffany. It's my resin lab. <laughs> All right, so of course you know uh tan resin isn't going to turn clear so stir for about 30 seconds until it looks clearish and start a pouring i don't know what that is in there 
but I don't want it in my resin. Oh, crap. All right. I just wanted to see. I've never used this mold before, so I'm just want, I'm just curious to see what it looks like. Now, as you see, I'm still pouring in the middle, and it's still going out to the sides, and that's what you want to do with these molds. And crap, I have mold left, so I'm going to take this. Oh, let's see what this one looks like. Let's do this one. All right. And know when to stop, people. Know when to stop. Sometimes I don't. All right. So there's a little bit of resin in here. And yes, it is dripping down the side. And it does that on these cups. It's okay. Even if you touch it, it's okay. You just have sticky hands or you need to wash them. But it did not um, come through the bottom of the cup. It did not burn through the bottom of the cup. And it's okay. So we'll let that cure in the cup. And then I'll show you that it did not do any of that, even with a little bit in there. So again, you just, you have, there's a three minute working time. So you see it's starting to cure. So if it would have been in the cup, it would have just been getting hotter and hotter and hotter and curing in the cup. And that's what's going to melt your dollar store cups. But you don't have to have fancy cups. So don't think you have to go out there and buy fancy pour spouted cups. You don't have to. You can use your dollar store cups. I'm going over here and I'm looking. Uh, the name of the flower mold. Hey, I did look that up because we have it in the store. Took a picture of it. The name of the flower mold is the Redesign Mold in Bloom by Prima. So it's called In Bloom. And you see it's setting up already, right? Now, I've had the tan resin for three months. So you can tell that three months, it's still working fine. It's setting up and it's curing and it's doing what it needs to do. So. Yes, there is there is um bloss blossoms and we're waiting to get that one in. They um did not have that one available. They sold out really, really quick. So we're waiting to get that one in. And there is a smaller one, yes. There's one that came with uh there's another one um that came with the in the garden um set. Yes, this one sets up really, really fast. That's what I'm saying. That um just you know you can PM me or um, uh, let me know if if there is an issue with you stirring and pouring within the three minutes. Then I think the slow set is the way for you to go. And I'm going to make sure that's in the store and available for y'all just in case. Because I know some when I was first learning resin, pouring resin, oh boy, I wish I had some slow set. <laughs> but then again, my patience is, is, you know, if you're doing crafts and stuff, you're like, oh, I want this. So oh, I got to pour this resin real quick, especially if I'm doing kits for y'all for the mixed media class. It's good to have quick setting resin because I got to keep on pouring the same old over and over and over again. So be caring. Yes, we will. Just got to get with um, the other partners on which ones that we are going to carry in the store. Um, I think both of these are redesigned. I do like the redesigns. And I actually, um, before I even, well, and, and I know Crystal is the same way. And, um, but um, before... I like putting stuff in the store. I want to see how it looks. Is it feasible? Can it be used? And so, yeah, that's my excuse for buying molds. So don't say anything, Penny. No. <laughs> but, um, no, really. Um, and there are some molds that I got that I don't find that I, I would use a lot. So I wouldn't even put them in the store unless someone specifically requested them. But. I do find this one 
with the hearts and the wings and the crown and stuff. That one is uh, hearts. And, yeah, I, I think I did. I put that one in the store. The um, other Stamperia mold uh, with the hearts. I use this so much. And I, I probably about wore that one out. Um, I will put that in the store. Um, this one, I'm definitely, this is the one I put in y'all's mixed media kit. This one has a tw 20, uh, it's called medallions, I think. But this one has um, uh, endless uses. I mean, as a basis for any layering, you can start with this. I love this one. Um, personally, there are some molds that I do not like that I, um, that I got that I wish I wouldn't have gotten, but okay. All right. So this is now starting to really get hard. Did y'all see this? Hold on. Who missed me doing this? Penny. Did you see this? Yes. Oh yeah. So I think Penny, that's a big flower. The bigger, that's a, it's huge. Oh, you watched it. Okay. This is so cool. I knew it would be, but it's cool. I can't wait to do this with the elephant and the other um, Adonis stamps, the heart, mechanical heart, which we have mechanical heart. We have the um, uh, uh, mixed media gears is what this one is called. Um, we have the elephant, there are all the other ones in the store. I don't they're on the shelf over there. I don't feel like getting it. Hold on. Okay, so this is this is setting up, but it's still uber hot, so it's not ready to come out. Let me go get the other stamps. Um. um oh, here we go. So. I'm about to pour me some resin pieces after I get off here. Oh, wait a minute. What time is it? Oh, it's 9.50. I'm doing good. So, okay. So, just want to show y'all. Here, it's already started to cure. This is hard. This is cured. It's not cracked. It's not broken. It did not melt. Okay? You just got to make sure you pour it within three minutes if you're using the cup. And you can throw it away. So, let me put that right there. This stamp that I used on that there, it's their mixed media stamps. That means it doesn't have that sticky or that, that backing that you can put on a stamp platform. This is a cushion. They have cushion for the pushing. Okay. This is the um, mixed media gears, and this is in the store. This one I love to death. They also, which I'm going to be super excited about pouring some resin on, is the um, Steampunk News. This one is great. Let me see which one. Cancel. Uh, then, um, I think... There's some that they sold out of. There we go. This is the um, mechanical animals. This is the elephant I was talking about. Um, you want to beat up. Who's beating up who? Wait a minute. Who's YT? Oh, YouTube. <laughs> Why yet? Why is he getting beat up? Well, yeah, I can understand. And Google need to be beat up. Okay, wait a minute. Here we go. And the paper is gorgeous, and you gotta get the stencils. But look, it has the butterfly, it has the um, feather, and then it has this little heart half uh, gear thing, and then the elephant. Love it. Um. Oh wait a minute. That's hot. Let me move this up. Then they have, um, this is the capture the moments. And this one I love because I love the sayings on it and I love the hoodie guy. And then it has the little, um, uh, steampunk elements to it. 
no time in life, right? That's my story. No time in life. Um, uh, yes, Tiffany, they're awesome. And then um, the one that you see a lot is Mechanical Heart. That's the, I think the, one of the, the, um, what do you call it? Popular ones. And it has steampunk life, mechanical heartbeat, follow your heart. And then it has the half heart and then it has the half rigots and stuff like that on it. Um, then um, the one that I don't have, but I put in the store, I think. Um, let me see if I can bring it up, which I think. Um, <laughs> uh, here it is. It's the skull. There. Uh, and it says uh, seven skull seven memories never die. And it has the, this is not going to show right on the camera, but it has a skull, the spider, memories never die, spider web. And then it has the, it ain't going to show right. There we go. and the wrenches that one's in the store but i don't have that one so and um see i'm making sure i know what's <laughs> you would think i know but i don't know if they're all sold out so um oh this is the um time machine and this has the buggy and this has the um, time machine steam, and then it has steam, and then it has the rigets thing, and then it has the uh, the steampunk light bulb, and then it has the timepiece with the uh, um, clocks and and stuff all around it. So, and this is called time machine. And then, and then of course the gears is in there. And I think that's it. Yep, and the other one sold out, but I will show it to you. Um, this is Life is a Piece of Mixed Media Art. Create without fear and be fearless. But this one sold out already, so sorry, y'all. Um, I want, you know, Talise, um, Penny's going to use red, um, my skull experiment like that. Yes, I do, Penny. I think um, Penny's going to use resin pieces on her um, stuff. Oh, shoot. You know, I forgot to take this out. Here's my little um, stars. I still believe we still have a star and moon mold in there. I like it that it does all the little bitty stars, the different size stars and the different size moons because that was the issue because you always had to buy um, different sizes when you needed something. Well, this gives you three moon sizes, three um, half moon sizes, and a varying amount of star sizes. So I like that. All right. So here we go. Big reveal. This is a little soft still, but look at that. That's gorgeous. That's why I like the Prima molds, the ornate ones, because you can get so many different things out of that and this is the redesign so yeah these are big enough that they can go on a cabinet in the kitchen or on a dresser or what on a canvas steampunk a canvas or any kind of art project as well as home decor so yeah, that's gorgeous oh i like that one now this one i like okay now this one yes this is also a redesign and the redesign it's made bigger they are bigger the stencils are bigger and it's because they're made for home use to for for your home decor to do different projects with that oh y'all don't want to see this y'all ain't ready y'all not ready oh my gosh y'all are not ready for this oh my you know something I might be doing something. Up. Right, Barbara? 
Amy, what did Amy say? I vote to send me every link for all your favorites. Steam Punk shops. You know, I I find a I find them everywhere. Well, Stamperia, uh, the Adonis collection is one of them. So hey, that'll be in queenscraftfair.com. That's my favorite link, Amy. <laughs> it does. This is you know something. Hello. I like this. Oh, on top of a steampunk gears. Anyway, this is gorgeous. Oh my god. And you can paint it. You know the good thing about with the um with the resin? You know you can bend it. It's still kind of flexible. So if I wanted to put this on a bottle. Imagine how gorgeous that would look on a bottle. Right? Anyway. Oh, see, it's almost cured, so I got to stop bending it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it looks so good on your egg. Oh, rabbit. It's W-R-A-B-B-I-T. It's w -R -A -B -B -I -T. Rabbit. Rabbit. <laughs> But imagine if you're using paints and get like two or three um, colors and you can have the darker ones on the inside right here so you can get your shadows and then do your lighter ones on the edges right here so you can get some depth and shadow in there. That would be gorgeous. And even if you use waxes, the good thing about Prima is they have three different blues. Well, let me find my blues. I don't know where mother blue is three different blues so you can put your dark in here your medium tone here and then your lighter tone on the edges to get a, a nice little depth in your flower so it's a bun bun <laughs> penny so i will show you one thing i'm going to do on my bunny and i think that so oh let me before i do that does uh I see Carla may have a question. It's Weshkoi Wabbit. Yes, to least. <laughs> uh, will you please show that mold you said was good for base when layering swirls? Oh. Um in fact, let me get the name of it. So I was and I will uh go back and edit the video and put the names of all the ones in here. Hold on. I do have it. I think it's this one. Yes. So this one is called medallions. This is the one right here. It's called medallions. And it is um, item number, if you're looking for it, which hopefully we'll have it in the store soon, 815-790. It's called medallions. And this is also a redesign. You're welcome. Okay, so um, I think I don't have any more questions. Have I covered everything about resin? There is no more stars or gears in it. Oh, they're all gone. Oh, we'll have to get some more. Yeah, I'm doing a uh, uh, Saturday inventory, so I will look at that. Um, yeah, those were uh those went like hotcakes, Amy. I'm telling you. I have a lot of okay. Thank you for the show. Oh, good. Yes, you are definitely now. Once you get it, Tiffany, and I think it should be here in a couple of days because it's been about a week, and it, they usually take about a week. If it's cold, they're based out of um, Minnesota. They will not send resin out when it's extremely extremely cold penny will tell you because of the fact that um they don't want it to freeze so they're they're very particular about their project their product because and i like that about a company and um i wouldn't be sitting here talking about Alumalite and all their products and believe me i have pretty much um ordered and this is before we even had it for the store i ordered everything they had because i wanted to test it out 
And believe me, I will never go back to another uh, resin. I love me some blue light, especially when I found out they had tan and black. Oh boy. And their dyes and their mica powders. Um, I just showed you their pewter uh, mica powder. And I think I did one in a um, black pearl and it gave it like a, um, almost a gray shiny texture. And it would, cause you can, they have, you can, I don't know if you can see the shine. You probably can't. And then they have their dyes, of course. So there's a lot that they have that I like. But not sh um, yeah, well, no, it's they'll ship it. But if it's like freezing, freezing, I wouldn't ask for it to be shipped because then you're going to get substandard product or product that's that's half screwed up. So yeah, I wouldn't ship if it's freezing, freezing either. But they're actually they're they're a very good company about um, shipping it out timely, in a timely manner. So let me show you something that I think, and I forgot who. Um, oh what? Oh oh Lord, Barbara Hands about to go uh, post on YouTube. <laughs> Sorry, Barbara. Okay, so for Bun Bun. And I was going to wait to do this since we started it on Crystal's channel. And let me move all of this out the way. So do I have any more questions on resin? Good night, June. Night, June. And this has cured to the paper. <laughs> um, there we go. Thank you for coming. Um, where is I'm off? Oh, we're done. We're done for the night on the resin. See, I did not blow anything up. See, because my safety rep was here. <laughs> my safety consultant. All right. I wonder if I could get a need molds now loan, <laughs> Carla. <laughs> All right, so um, I'm going to try to do this, finish this up tomorrow night because I'm trying to keep myself on a schedule. So I'm not going to do anything tonight because I don't want to. Um, yeah, my desk is a mess. So this is my um, Easter garden tray. So I decided to put it in a tray. And if I can hold this down, I will show you. This is the side of it. I use that mold in tan um, from uh, Prima. And I put that on both sides, covered it in burlap. Um, I actually did this in white because I thought it was going to be better in white, and it wasn't. So I actually colored it in tan. Um, <laughs> da, da, da. Oh, yeah. No, no more experiments. My safety consultant is gone. Can't experiment. Um, so the only thing left I have to do is the Rashkui rabbit. And so he's going to be turned this way, I think. And I'm not going to do more than two eggs. I think I'm going to raise this up a little bit so that they stick out. And also, so as I was trying to play around with what I was going to do, I found these. And these are, um, a bunch of like colored pearls that I think I had gotten for Christmas and did a Christmas tree with that I really didn't like um, too much. I think I did it wrong. But anyway, these were from Michael's and they're different colored pearls. So I'm going to take these and have them. They're not rabbit droppings, but they're going to go <laughs> right Skittles. And they're going to go inside of the, the basket. So I'm going to raise the, um, the um, moss up a little bit. And then I'm going to put some of these inside like they're like pieces of candy because who doesn't want a chocolate rabbit and pieces of candy in their basket but they just can't be joined so I'm just going to pick out the colors that complement the basket and probably the bigger ones and just put one or two uh probably about five or six maybe ten in there so that's going to go in there and then 
Um, I'm gonna raise it up a little bit. I'm thinking I'm coming to liking these right here. So I'm going to actually glue those down a little bit. And then the other day I did the um, the cross because of course it's Easter. And because he rose in three days, he has three pearls. So the other thing too is on, let me see if I can get this out the way. Oh, let me move them, move this. So the other thing is that I had this applique, Christine, it's pink. <laughs> Don't fall out, but it's pink. Jelly beans, yes, Carla, jelly beans. That's what I was thinking of. Thank you, Tiffany. So what I was thinking of is, here's my wabbit, and I have this applique. So I'm going to put the applique like right between his ears right here and have it running down his back. I'm going to love that. And then, and then, something Miss Talise gave me, which I haven't undone, but is gonna go on his little booty for his little puff tail, but it's so sparkly and shiny and kind of furry, but that's going right there. She gave me a string of it, so I'm just gonna make a little bunny tail and put it there. This is gonna be so cute. Yeah, the, it doesn't it, Amy? That's what I thought. As soon as I pulled it out, I was like, oh, that was me. And, um, and it, it, if I put it like right there, it hits right here at the tail and it's so cute. And then the sides will go right there. So I thought that was really cute. And then have the little bunny tail on the back. And then, see, I pulled everything out. I've been working, y'all. Then, see, I haven't met, I haven't done this much. So I'm thinking of. So this, where his eye is at, is pretty perfect. Let me put this up. And then have it going up the ear. But then it looks like it's his eye. And so I found two, thanks to Talise. So I thought that was pretty perfect too. So, and then I found, hello, burlap. This bunny's gonna have a little burlap. Okay. And, but he needs a little thing around there. And that, see, and I don't know, I've never like used, you know, I've been gifted appliques by various people to lease. Barbara, <clears throat> excuse me, and other people that I've known. Um, so, um, but I've never really used them properly correctly. So I'm going to attempt to use them correctly. So this is going to be his little his little necklace. Oh, this is here we go. That's going to be his little necklace. I was thinking that would be cute, especially once I put on his little. His little bunny thing. But wait, there's more. What? Oh, <laughs> Carlson, you got to stop. <laughs> oh, where is this, the thing at? Oh, here it is. No, nope, that's not it. Here it is. Not only will he have his little tie, but he will have his brooch on his tie. Oh, he's gonna look so cute. <laughs> So that's going to go on there. That's going to go on there. This probably will go on there. And I think, um, hold on. Oh, I haven't decided yet, but I'm going to. So his eyes are dug out like this. So I thought it was cute. To have like little, and you know I like blue. 
They should be pink, but I don't have pink. <laughs> Wait a minute, who's calling dibs? I have it. I don't know if it's gonna come out right. I'm gonna try. <laughs> and then that's gonna be his other eye. But I thought those were freaking cute because they sat right in there, really cute. Or I can put lace underneath and then put the um the clear ones on there. So I don't know. Maybe blue. <laughs> Maybe not. Then um for the let me grab the rice paper. So I don't know if y'all saw this um in the store, but this is the Stamperia wallpaper writings, writings on wallpaper or wallpapers writing. Um rice paper. It's freaking huge. It's 18 by something or another. Let me see. Let me get you the exact measurements. 12. And four and a half. So 16 and a half by 12. So 16 by 12. And this has writing on it. Old script. And this is in the store. It's by Stamperia. And it's the rice paper. But this is what I'm going to do him in. Because I don't want him. I want him um, to have a little bit of stuff. But, you know, not too shabby chic. You know, I don't do that. But I think this stuff will go good with that. But, and then I'll, you know, I'll find some sort of lace to put on his, um, his uh, legs. And hit, to bring it out. Um, his back legs and his front legs. But I think I got the tail, the back, the eyes, the ears, and everything done. Um, what paper did you do the egg in? Oh, I did. Oh. Um, hold on. I'll show you. Uh, uh, so the egg. This egg is done in. Um, let me look this up. So I want, like I said, I want it to be rustic. Oops, <laughs> it's heavy. It was done in this paper, paper napkin, and I got this at. Um, and when I do the bunny show, I'll post this. But it's from Pacific Sunset and on Etsy. And believe me, if if I'm telling you about another store. Besides my own, <laughs> it's got to be a good one. That's where I got this paper. I mean, this napkin. And you don't have to use rice paper. This is a napkin. And it turned out really, really good. What? No, it's not, Carla. No, I don't do shabby chic. It is, it is a rustic, shabby woodland chic as crystal would say <laughs> so this is this it has a little bit of blue and a little bit of purple at the top and a little bit of tan at the bottom so that's what i like about that so i tried to keep it where all the the um trees were going up and then at the man, top i really didn't care and neither did i at the bottom so that's kind of where the the other pieces went to but i think that turned out really good and I wanted to keep this egg pretty simple because of this. I wanted to be the focal point. And then I did shine it up a little bit with some with some um, Spectrum Noir glitter in a jar. Glitter in a jar. Love it. Okay. But it's kind of, oh, I didn't put that on. I thought I put it on. Anyway, that goes right here. I got to put that on with some mixed media glue. Oh, I just had it sitting there. Oh, stayed on pretty good, didn't it? So, anyway, that's, yeah, that's the big egg. Oh, you, tissue paper. I'm using rice paper with um, the bunny. This is um, napkins. And um, so I just took off, it's three-ply napkins. So I just took off the, the white um, um, layers. 
and just use the thin tissue paper. You can use tissue paper is the same as um, both of these. It's going to work the same. I've used tissue paper before as well. So any one of those will work just fine. I'm going to use mixed media glue to put that on. But yeah, this is, and the girls that are on the front of that egg, I got from the same shop. So these girls is on, uh, is a napkin as well, or a napkin as well. I got that from the same shop. So I will finish that up and be using some epicades and stuff that I finally got. I, think I got this from across the water. That's Talise. That's Talise. That's Talise. Because I have a bag that says Talise. That's how I know that. <laughs> and then I have, um, then I had some stuff I had gotten from Donna Little as well that I have out that that I'm thinking about using. But then the um, the chocolate, the little um. What did you call them? Jelly beans will be the pearls, will be the colored pearls. It's giving up. I'm going to bed. Barb. Oh, sorry, Barb. It YouTube is crazy. I can't. I was supposed to have two people on my panel and I can't hear them, but y'all can hear them. So how weird is that? I have to stop and mute myself and watch YouTube in order to hear them, <laughs> which is crazy. Yes, I got her vintage um, bag, and oh my gosh, I think um, I think I have a project in mind for that one. And then the other stuff I got from Ez the um, appliques and stuff, um, I got from Esme. I think that pink one came from Esme on one of her sales. Oh yeah, I get in trouble every time I watch Esme. And um, and then um, Talise had gifted me, yeah. And then Talisa had gifted me um, uh, some appliques. Um, Barbara Higgins had gifted me some appliques and some lace. So I was very, very lucky. They So now I got to use them. <laughs> yes, I love it. Yeah, Penny's the one that um, uh, enabled me on the Donna Little, but it was a good enabling because she gave me extra, extra little stuff that I just love. Love it, love it. So, does anybody have any questions in reference to tan resin? Oh, why is my thing crooked and cockeyed? So sorry, y'all. Oh, wow. It's really cockeyed. Okay. So, does anybody have any questions? Tan resin. This is uh, in bloom. It's actually in bloom. Yes, actually in the store. What the? Oh, <laughs> she likes. Oh, she likes my Ferris wheel. Y'all gonna see my messy room, but yeah, there's my Ferris wheel. This has all my Lindy's uh, in. So, but it works because. I have like the Starburst, the Moon Shadows, the Flat Fabios. I think I have, oh, then I have the Dilutions, but I think I'm going to be replacing it with something else. But yeah, I do love my Ferris wheel. <laughs> that was another penny enabling penny. Y'all, do not let Penny send you anything or tell you anything. <laughs> Oh, yeah, this, um, I forgot where I got this from, but it's so old, but I can't get rid of it because I love the picture. I love the picture. Um, it's actually not on my desk. Um, I sat it in a cart. The, um, um, the cart from Ikea, the rolling cart. I forgot what it's called. Good gracious. And so I have stuff underneath it. And then when I need it, I can just roll it over. So it sits behind my desk because these are two desks together. I have the, um, hey, Crafty Kitty, how are you? I have this desk and then I have another uh, small Ikea uh, mic desk or something beside it. And then behind that, I have the cart. 
So, so, um, so I'm just going to go over this again. So make sure nobody has any questions. I always do that. So this is, and why is this? Oh, this looks really cockeyed. <laughs> How are you doing tonight, Crafty Kitty? All right. All right, so this is the tan resin. And like I said, if you do shabby chic or um, a lot of uh, earth tone colors, you know, this kind of will be for you. I love the color. It takes the um, uh, the waxes very well. In fact, I, I think the waxes look best on the tan. Um, so that's the tan resin. Um, <laughs> then we have the white resin and that's what it pretty much er, most everybody uses so with the white white resin you can color it with dyes um i um what was it a couple of drops of the reinker for the um distress inks but really only a couple of drops and it's not going to give you the color of the reinker. It's only, it's going to lighten it. So, you know, you can use it, but it's going to give you, I call it a faux color. The Illuminite, Illuminite people, they do have their own die sets and I ordered um, their uh, African American dye, their Caucasian and their Native American dye for when I color like faces and angels and stuff like that. And if you combine them, you can get it like a terracotta color. And that's what I got on this one. And I just love the, uh, the color of it, but it, I don't know anybody of that color. That is a reddish terracotta, but yeah, you can get that color. And that's with the dyes, um, with the white, you can use you can use a mica powder with any of them it just you know whatever base you want but this is the pewter and um mica powders you can get the prima has mica powders um you can get mica powders in a store i just specifically wanted the copper the black pearl and the pewter for different things this mostly for the like steampunk and um uh that that might be true penny <laughs> and then you have the black resin and again you can use like the black distress ink you can do use a black dye but believe me you're not going to get this cold black color oh there's my camera my sucky camera you're not going to get this cold black color but from anywhere but the black resin dye believe me it's going to give you a good color and I love the way you can, uh, it takes inks a little bit differently. Again, I will show you. This is the purple on black. Well, I'm um, sorry, electric violet on black. This is the electric violet on white. And this is the electric violet on tan. So here's your white, here's your black, and here's your tan. Um, yeah, tan. So it's going to give you three different variations of that color on different resins. So then if you feel the resin, the resin gets really, 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 really hot. So you have a three minute working time when you use the fast cast resin, um, about 20 seconds to 30 seconds to stir and two and a half minutes to pour. After that, if you're using cheap cups, it needs to come out them cups. If you're using cups like these, which are specifically made for resin, you can get them on Amazon. Um, um, a couple of people have expressed interest in just buying the cups and the containers. Amy, I will put them in the store. Um, but once you learn your resin, you will feel it. It gets really, really hot. Don't leave your hand on there. You can get some degrees of burns. Not third degree, probably not second degree, but you will get a first degree burn. So once it starts cooling down, um, go ahead and pop it out because it's already kind of set together. And then you can bend it a little bit. I bend it this as it was still soft. And then I let it harden and it's going to stay this way. I cannot bend it back. That's the way it's going to stay. 
So if you have like a doorknob uh, mold, like from Prima, or you want to bend something around, like I took this, um, I took this frame and I bent it around the egg and then I let it set and that's where it stayed. And when I was ready to put it on there, I think y'all saw me do that on Crystal's channel. Then um, it's going to stay that way. It's not going to bend back. So you're good. Um, what was the other thing? Uh, waxes. Oh, white. You can gesso it. You can put your paint on it. I, if you're going to paint resin, I would definitely gesso it first. You can use um, the transparent or the um, or the white or black gesso, and then I would paint it. Um, I have tried crackle on it. It does not work. It's such a slick surface, and the um, see this is actually still bendable. Um, because it hasn't fully set yet. But if you're going to use, you cannot use crackle paint on it. I've already tried. It's It gets too slick and it doesn't keep, uh, because the crackle paint is very slick as well, which causes the crackle, um, it's not going to be right on there. Um, oh, let me put that up. Then the last thing is we took resin and we poured it on a rubber stamp and the stamp that I used was the Adonis Stamperia stamp uh, mixed media gears and we poured it right on the stamp. You can still see the remnants because I haven't cleaned it. <laughs> She-Ra. Oh, what's that? And this is still kind of uh, flexible as well. But if you plan on using this as a curved surface or anything like that, make sure that you put, um, immediately put it on whatever curved surface you're going to do and let it set. And it's going to, it's, I mean, we've been doing the show for an extra half an hour, what hour since then. And you can still bend it a little bit because it's very, very thin, but tomorrow it's going to be like this. And it's going to be able, let me see if I can get a corner and it's just going to crack right on off. So get it while you can get it to where it's going to bend adhere it down and then it will stay like that. Um, this is very, very thin. I was messing with it yesterday to see how thin I can get it and still peel it up. So this is very, very, let me see if I can focus it. Very, very thin. Uh, is the woman version of He-Man? No, actually I'll show you the stamp and then this is very, very thin as well. So you just pour it on there. Um, and then wait till it gets not as hot <laughs> and about two, three minutes in, because, um, once you kind of know your resin, you know, about three minutes, it's going to start hardening when it's not on or in a mold. And then about three or four minutes later, it start hardening in a mold, but outside of a mold, like I did on the stamp, it's going to get nice and pliable and you can peel it right off the stamp. And that's what you get. You get a version of the stamp in resin. You can do that in clay as well. You know that, right? Um, let me pull the stamp. Um, if I remember what I did with the stamp, I don't know what I did with the stamp. Um, uh, no, I have no idea. I think I put it up somewhere. I don't know it. But anyway, it's a steampunk. Um, there's a steampunk lady and a steampunk man that Crafter's Companion has. And that's what this was. And I don't have a stamp. I'll find it and send you a picture of it. Um, but again, um, and you can play with this. Do not do it on clear acrylic stamps. Do not do it on polymer. Poly what? No, I'm sorry. Yeah. The clear stamps only do it on the rubber stamps, red rubber or the mixed media one that stamp, um, Stamperia has. And I know, um, Visual image has some red rubber, dark room door. So just find out who has red rubber stamps. You can use it on that. Um, 
you will have to clean them thoroughly clean them or the, or you're going to have you know it's not going to stamp correctly after that if you have um resin built up on it and you haven't cleaned it so you will have to clean it and you can just take like one of these brushes or a damp cloth or whatever and wipe it off and the resin r wipes right off uh, barbara oliver just got kicked out again well, YouTube has something against um, uh, this this show tonight. I don't know why. <laughs> um, let me see if I missed any question. Yeah, Amy, just hang with Penny. She she would definitely get, uh, send you some uh, good tips. <laughs> no, Nikki started to get sleepy because she got to wake up at five in the morning. <laughs> it's ten thirty. Um, yeah, because the meetings, at, of course, they want to schedule it first thing in the morning. But, okay, does anybody have any questions about resin? Again, we do have a choice for the, and let me bring this out. Oops. For the uh, Aluma, ugh. Aluma Res RC3 casting resin. This is the um, liquid to solid in seven minutes. So you have about three minutes to work with it. This is in black. Um, I did um, just got the order. Um, if you don't want to wait, I just got an order. So I think we have like four that just came in a couple of days ago. So we have black in the store. Um, if within two weeks and well, I'm sorry, we have five, I think someone already bought one, but, um, within about two weeks, if no one purchases it, then, you know, we'll have to buy it ourselves because again, I want y'all to have the freshest resin possible. So we usually order right from there. Tiffany knows I'm waiting on her tan. Yeah, black is actually my favorite because if you like steampunk and stuff, uh, um, you'll love it. So uh, on the intermediate uh, kit, I'm thinking about um, I'm doing some resin stuff. Let me see. All right. Well, if I don't have any more questions, and hopefully, you know, I y'all learned a little bit about resin uh do's do not <laughs> over pours uh, you know and again if you over pour don't worry about it because you have the mold outline when it gets soft just rub it off just tear it it'll tear right off don't wait for it to harden um or you're not going to be able to do it as you saw if you want to go back and watch you saw i over poured and i did that for a reason it was not a mistake <laughs> uh steampunk kit oh we can do that yes tan is is yeah tan is actually um one of the favorite ones but i mean but who does not because again when you put anything with tan on it it just if for some reason it looks fine i mean especially like um like the frames and stuff like that now if it was something like the flower i would want to color it but maybe that's why it's acting funny let me go down a little bit more if it's something like the flower or something i definitely would color this but as y'all saw on the box that i made um the other night i did white resin and it just didn't look right so i had to actually paint it in tan but if i would have casted it in tan i wouldn't have had to do anything but plop the resin piece on there easy peasy yeah why can be too stark yeah because it usually unless it's a it's a project that requires white um i usually either color it um wet uh or wax it or uh paint it and then the black if it calls for black then yeah that's all good and well but usually black i will wax it up um, does it need the top coat to keep the color on? It needs gesso. If you have white resin and you want to um, uh, 
have paint on it, then I would definitely gesso it first, then put the um, paint on top. And no, you don't need a top coat, but it doesn't hurt if you have a top coat, but you don't need it. I don't even, I don't have it on my, um, I don't have it on my um, uh, Easter garden tray. But yeah, you can use a varnish. The varnish is going to make it more shiny. Uh, no, you do not need a top coat with the wax. The wax will dry. Yeah. Uh, thank you, Carla. Not. Hey, y'all listening. What? <laughs> yes. Not, not when using the wax. You do not need it. But I would give the wax a couple of days to set and dry on your project before you start rubbing it and licking it and doing whatever you're going to do to the wax. Well, not licking it. See, it's late. Um, never mind. <laughs> I need to go to bed. No gesso when using wax, correct. Correct, correct, correct. And you can use colorant in, uh, in, um, in your resin. You just have to make sure you have the right product because unlike myself who made a um, smoke bomb on my first experience trying to color resin and scared the, the bejesus out of uh, June, who soon became my safety consultant. <laughs> Yeah, you don't want to be coloring it with stuff like I tried watercolor. I tried uh, what alcohol inks. I tried a whole bunch of stuff, and yeah, none of it worked. It would be like cheap cottage cheese when you finish with it. Now, the one thing I did find that you can color it with is the distress um, distress ink refillers, but you still can't put a lot in there. So if you're going for like a blue and it's a royal blue, it probably will end up a light blue. You can, but you can also color it by coloring the mold that you have. So if you have a mold, and I think I already have a video on this, uh, uh, using uh, mica powder with mold, you can um, brush mica powder inside your mold and then pour the resin over top and you will get the color of the mica powder. And th this was a pewter color and it will color the whole thing, even though it's white, it turned out pewter. Um, so, and you can also do that with acrylic paint. So if you paint your mold with acrylic paint and then pour the resin in, it will pull that um, uh, micro glaze, the micro, uh, the Tim Holtz micro glaze. Uh, where is that mess? Over the what? Um, I've not tried that, but let's try that as soon as I find it. Um, I moved a lot of stuff around, so I got a new cabinet, but I haven't put everything in there yet. <laughs> um, microblade. I can't remember where I put stuff. Um, I haven't found that, but I will try that and see and let you know. But I haven't done it yet. Yes. If you if you use sprays or paint, gesso before then. But if you use wax, you don't need to gesso. Correct, Toby. Well, yeah, I guess you could. I mean, using the micro glaze is not going to hurt. Um, I have not done that, and if I could figure out what I did with my micro glaze, I would test it out, <laughs> but I, I don't know what I did with it. Hold on. 
Stress glaze. Let's try it out. And it's such a shame I've never opened it. <laughs> um, let's try it with this one. So this it has the wax on it. And let me see. <laughs> It really doesn't do anything. It it wipes the um so micro glaze it goes on but it wipes off the wax. So if you notice uh hold on cuz it's now it's on my fingers. There we go. Okay, so you see and I don't want it to get it in my micro in that glaze. So this is where it has wax on it. And if I use it, you see it coming off. And now it's on my fingers. Not all of it comes off, but some does come off. And now it's on my fingers. It comes off like on the, not in the crevices, but on this, like the um, raised surfaces, but it's not on the crevices. Probably not, Talise. Let me find something with wax completely dry. Let me see. I don't want to mess with my egg. Well, we'll retest it tomorrow. <laughs> but usually, like with the glaze, uh, oh, with the glaze, um, when um, I was in, I went to a scrapbook conference, and they used the distress, um, distressings, and as soon as you put the glaze on it, then um, it's it's good to go. It and it seals that distress ink in, and you can actually put medium over top of that glaze. But the wax is going to dry. I mean, you really don't need it, and the glaze is not going to make it any less shinier or not shinier. So you would want to use acrylic paint for that. Just want some acrylic paint. Okay. Any other questions? Because it is now 1046 and time for moi to go to bed. No, no. Um, I'm hoping y'all will try this. This is going to be so neat. I'm going to use this in a break. We'll just send this to Amy. Amy, you want this? It'd probably be nice and stiff. Oh my gosh. Don't take it the wrong way, Amy, but it will be stiff <laughs> by the time you get it. Oh, thank you, Carla. <gasps> yes, really. Do you want it? I know you're my steampunk buddy. <laughs> and I know you're getting ready to order some stuff in the store, so I will slip it into your to your uh, package when you order. But you know also, if you want to, and I think I'm going to do a project with the Mechanical Fantasy anyway, but um, I am going to... Um, press this in, into some clay and get that impression in some clay as well. I wanted to try that as well. And I think um, Adonis, on um, if you if you see um, the video we did at Creativation with um, um, Crystal, she um, did that with the heart. So, yeah, I'm excited about that. 
I know you're making your list now. Tomorrow, um, I did the sh uh, show tonight, but um, Ranger um, will be in and ready to purchase tomorrow. So it has everything folks have been asking for were the little stuff that they wanted from um, like stickles and stuff. So and that will be in there. And your heat guns and your craft mats and your just your sprays. We listen. We listen. <laughs> so funny, Amy. Yes, yes, yes. Um, but yes, we wanted to give you this um, resin 101 class because I know a lot of y'all y'all have been asking about the different resin resin pieces, what you can do. And then, of course, and like I said, I haven't seen anyone do this on YouTube. I've seen them do it with clay and stuff. I haven't seen them do it with resin. So I was like, well, why can't we do it with resin? If you have done it on YouTube and you come across my video, sorry, I didn't watch you. But thank you. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> I, I can't claim I've seen anybody do it. So, But I know they have because there is nothing that somebody um has done that somebody else hasn't done somewhere so <laughs> all right i'm good okay wait a minute she's making okay so no more questions so i am going to end this stream i appreciate everyone stopping by and for those who watch the rerun i appreciate you um for stopping by and watching the the uh rerun and stop by again and I will talk Thumbs to you up. ladies later. Thumbs up. Good night. Bye, everybody.